Yeah, yeah. Marshall. So what you know about teamwork? Cause I've been in the clouds trying to make the dream work. Always done it on my own, that's why I seem hurt. Cause I ain't met no one that ever put me first. So what I know about teamwork? Cause I've only ever done it on my lonesome. I gotta deal through it out, yeah, I grown some. Don't expect love if you've never shown none. I spent last year in the hay, so many records got made I kept that shit to myself, I only wanted my pay I took some time off the stage, got in the bed with the snakes They wasn't doing their job, I let them slither away I wanna build me a team, so I can get to my fans I need someone on my side, that's gonna give me a chance But shit just ain't what it seems, don't let them in on your plans I hope they know what I mean, I hope that you understand So never land, never pan out Wings talk, think I better let them spare out Was too chill, think I better let the man out Grew up with hand me down, now I'm never taking hand outs Man, if you I knew all the things I'm watching when I'm planned out But I need help to do it, so can I get a fan count? Can I get a fan count? Never understood me, now it's funny how I stand out Me, myself and I, homie, welcome to the man. So what you know about teamwork? Cause I've been in the clouds trying to make the dream work Always done it on my own, that's why I seem hurt Cause I ain't met no one that ever put me first So what I know about teamwork? Cause I've only ever done it on my lonesome I gotta deal through it that, yeah, I grown some Expect love if you've never shown none. I know my girl on my side. I'm trying to build us a life. Thank all my family alive. And I just want to provide. They say it's gonna take time, but I've been losing my mind. She helps me grow in the boat. My family ready to ride. So why am I feeling low? When life is giving me highs. I put my value in sales instead of who's by my side. But I can see it's the front. That's why I'm not coming back. Yeah, I was slow to react. Don't give a damn what they thought of it Yeah, I'm feeling glorious A flash from the audience, man, should've recorded it I took a color pill, used my computer skills Now I got agents after me, word up to Morpheus The future, I saw today, do this till I'm bored with it Invest in myself in debits, hope I don't get audited My body is a temple, but I fucked up the ornaments I'm so gassed up that you, it's probably a war with it It's a message to the earthlings Join the team round here, we put the work in It ain't teamwork if only one of us is working Only thing I'm signing is when fans bring the merchants I ain't got the thing yet that I wasn't deserving And I ain't famous yet, but that bitch be flirting I'll make it rain, start a wave and go surfing I'll make it rain, start a wave and go surfing So what you know about teamwork? Mm. And what I know about teamwork? Hey y'all. Welcome to Deep Seas. <laughs> Deep Seas. Um her mic's giving her trouble. So I'm up here. Um to entertain you guys. Hello. Hey, dogs. 
Oh, I hope everybody's had a fantastic Tuesday. It's Tuesday, right? Yeah. Tomorrow's hump day. <laughs> she is. She's at a loss for words. <laughs> Where have, oh, where have, where have I been, Kendra? Girl, you know, sometimes we just got to have those mental health breaks. And <coughs> Sebastian's case and covering these bad actors, man, it'll really irritate my soul. And so I have to take a second, you know, just take a second. I'll be back this weekend, though. <laughs> You're mine now. <laughs> it's Jones in the house. Gang, gang. Yeah. Yeah, that case has been rough, but it's just like everything just ignorance, man. These yeah. folks just don't take other people into good. Oh. Did I hear something? It's working. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, how I are you? Know, I had to restart my whole computer. It's like, hey, you don't have audio. And let me tell you, at the very last possible minute, I was like, what the crap? So thank you for hopping up here. You're welcome. There yeah, he is. Welcome, Deetsy. All right. Hey, guys. This is a 8 o'clock <laughs> live at night. How's it going, everyone? How's everyone doing? We got everybody in the house. I can't scroll back. Thank you guys for all being here. Yeah, I was muted. I wasn't muted. I had no audio. It was insane. Uh, <laughs> I I even tried like unplugging the mic and <laughs> sometimes me, it just that. happens. Mm -hmm. Look, they're so happy you're here though. I know. <laughs> Look at that. They're like, oh, but Jonesen, that's better. That's better no, not indeed. better. Good enough for now. <laughs> I'm never covering Sebastian. I cuss people out on TikTok instead. Oh, man. Sebastian's case is just so hard. So, it is. You know, it sometimes is. you just got to pull yourself from it and, you know, reassess. I know. We might, if Jenny pops in here later, we might take a look at the some of his case later on. But there's a couple other things that are. Mm -hmm. with, hey, Eliza and Shambles, my favorite person here. <laughs> <laughs> Shambles is crazy, uh, but we love her. Oh no, Deeds is back. Jonesen was letting us play outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the oh, bad parent. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hang on. I think it is Nanya, but let me just put this up just in case. Is that you, Nanya? It's me. Okay. Don't show us your pain. I don't know why. I don't know why you would think it wasn't me. It totally looks like me. <laughs> Look at this bitch. What? Look at what the is screen, Jones. Oh my screen. God, Tanya. <laughs> I can't stand you. <laughs> Laundry. Look, Amac, that's a real catfish, baby. That's, Look, that, that's what a catfish looks like, Amac. Oh Listen, my gosh. For the people who don't know, I'm completely a city folk person, but recently mm -hmm. I learned about noodling and I was like, well, goddamn, is that the catfish that they're talking about everywhere around here? Let me get me a catfish avatar. What is it's, noodling? Noodling's where you stick your, where you go. <sighs> I don't know what noodling is. Okay, um, noodling is where you stick your arm in like these deep holes in lake beds in murky lakes. Ew. Yeah, I would never do it myself personally, but you stick you your wait. arm in and the catfish bites your hand and you grab the gill. They call it something. Water. They call it something else too, though. It has another name, I think. Well, Nanya, Nanya is such a city folk. She didn't even know what tubing was. Tubing's I know. Very simple. I know. Um, laundry, I don't know about the long haul, like not all night, but we're definitely going to be here a couple of hours. So you might get at least two pibs on tap. Two on tap, I think. It's a two pib night. That's not me, Amax. <laughs> what is? What did you say? You guys told me what her new nickname is. and Mac Attack. 
Is that what it was? Mac attack? Yeah. Yeah. I love the it. Mac attack. The Mac attack. The Mac attack. Look at all these people loving the catfish. Oh my god. Funya's definitely catfishing us all now. Oh, absolutely. All day, every day. I have well, four hundred I kind of want to be a catfish now too. Oh. Well, you can change your avatar while you're up here. Let me go look. Let me you go just look. have to go get one. Can you? I need a cat. I'll be a catfish. Yeah. Let me see. Let me find something cute. <laughs> and this is what group think looks like, guys. <laughs> this is an example. <laughs> I was influenced. Oh, I want a cool catfish. Hang on. Oh, this me. one's me. It's a whopper. It's fat and everything. It's, <laughs> it's a whopper. No, it can't be fat. If you're fat, it can't be fat. Then it's not a catfish. Oh, that's true. No, but damn. Oh. You got to find one with like a chiseled chin. and. You don't know how long it takes me to figure out like what to do on a thumbnail. Can you imagine? The fine jaw bones. I don't even know what's happening right now. We really have gone off. Yeah, this wasn't even. Yeah, it wasn't even about the catfishes. I was just like, oh. But, but now we all have to be catfishes. <clears throat> right. You made it a Necessary. thing. Fun, yeah. I, I probably did. Damn it. So Sorry. When, my Discord used to say when she was calling, it would say, Fun Yai, Nun Yai is calling. <laughs> now it says just randomly out of nowhere, it changed to Fun Yai, Nun Yai. So, uh -oh. uh oh. I know. It's, it's always changing my name, though. I know. I have I a 55 pound catfish. Oh, caught. She caught a 55 pound cat pat, cat, catfish in Alabama. Dang. How do I change? Oh, there we go. Edit. I know, Laura. See, they said that's why that's why people think I um I take over everything. I just came in with my little normal little avatar here and she the whole screen has paused. She can't be funny alone, <laughs> doggone it. We went in on this action. <laughs> that's no fun. Oh, look at look at look at Joe. Let me see. <laughs> with a big that's ass a mouth. It is. That's yeah. me. I went for the cartoon <laughs> version. Look, of course you did, Deets. Of know, course yeah. you did. What is God, Deets. It was cute. <laughs> I got a pretty one. Uh, That's what I thought. Laura doesn't want to be a catfish. Oh, come on. Come on. Their lips are so weird looking. Uh, they are. They can get huge too. Same Welcome to the motherfucking Deets in the Creeks. <laughs> oh my God. Not Deets in the Creeks. Oh Lord. <laughs> hey, NJ. I hope you're well. Okay, we'll get down to business. Did I mention I hate all you? Who is a rat, a small round cheese block? <laughs> I love the name. But okay. oh, I like that. Did I mention I hate all of you beautiful people? <laughs> <laughs> yep, has a ha, you have a catfish? Hey, tragedy pimps, how are you doing, love? Hope you're well. It's National Unicorn Day. Do I get Ooh, a present? Nicole B. Oh, I, I was gonna say Nicole B is the unicorn. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, you do, Nicole B. You do. As soon as I get back into the chat, I'll I'll send you your present. Oh, you sent me one on DM. Okay, let me look. Let me look. Oh, NJ turn. said, "Nunya, do not feel bad. I never heard of a river bottom either. I cannot believe you'd never heard of a. Oh, look, Grandma Sherry's a catfish <laughs> now." I like okay. hers. That one's so cute. Actually, that yeah, looks Jones. like oh Jones and I like that one. Oh, I do too. I like that. One. Look at it. Looks all girthy. Like, well, not girthy, but just you know. She's I mean, it's earthy. She's posing. She's posing. She's got a good scenery in the background. <gasps> Definitely is. Like she oh, looks like she's on a sur surfboard. Yeah, she yeah. probably is. Eliza sent me one that's definitely more me. So I okay. Oh gosh. Okay. Here we go. But oh my god, great. 
Look at green. That's creepy. <laughs> what did green do? What did green not do? Is she put a cat green. head with the catfish mouth <laughs> with the fish body? I don't know. It's the face. It's just the whole face. It's all of it. I can't. Poor thing. Um, Why are we catfishing? I've got the ultimate catfish image. We are doing it because a Mac talking smack is a catfish. Mac so attack. Now. Yes. Mac AKA attack. Mac attack. Hey, Road Rush. So we're standing in solidarity. Yeah. Gang, gang. <laughs> Look at Lindsay Lee and changed hers too. I can't see some of these on my phone because you'd have to highlight the. Oh, maybe she did it. I don't know. I can't see. All right, give me one second. I gotta put my. I get my new catfish. Kirby Barbie OG said Barbie catching a catfish. There you go. Oh, you guys are silly. Right, oh, Granny? Exactly. <coughs> I changed mine for AMAC talking smack, Mac attack, the catfish with the snacks. In the creek. <laughs> throw it in there. Uh, no, it's like in the creek out back. You got to end it with the act. Yeah. I, I, church. I know my, I know my limits. I know, <laughs> I know, I know who I am. So I <laughs> look at my catfish. Let me Thank see. Thank you, Eliza. Oh, my oh, goodness gracious. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that one's better. Of course. Uh, well, very you, you hate math. That's very deep. Of Lindsay, course. Oh, she has a cat and a fish. Love it, Lindsay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Grain. Holy cow. Look at that guy. <laughs> it's creepy, isn't it? It is a little creepy, Grain. That so one's a little creepy. Alice in Wonderland looking shit. Oh, so did a small round cheese block. Did the same one. Look at you oh. copycats. Oh. Again, I just want to point out the bell is is the bell is tinking and you all just keep standing up. <laughs> <laughs> tink, tink, tink. I would pay a hundred dollars to see one of you on panel try to pick up and hold a catfish. I've ha I have held a catfish. Oh, I've held a cat. Yeah, we used to go fishing in my papa's lake. He had catfish. Well, but it broke my heart because he he skinned them and everything. Like, you know. Hey, do you oh, know? oh. While they were alive. Oh, apparently. God, Johnson, this is getting worse. This is. I'm just saying. Apparently, that's the thing. That's just how old country folks do it. They just take the fish out of the fish basket, take them to their little cleaning sink, and just start skinning them and gutting them and shit. Did he find uh, I wouldn't understand. I don't know. My grand, my great grandpa, I think, still has the record for like the biggest catfish or something. And it was like five and a half feet long in the area not the biggest in the country of course but they were big into catfish catfishing catfish hunting hey, no, there's really though there's, <laughs> even though him. it broke my heart that he would you know you gotta clean the fish to eat them but we would go out there we would catfish get them all go and he'd clean them then my nanny would whip them up fillet them and Make a whole catfish dinner with I don't like, and hush puppies. I don't like catfish either. I don't like catfish. Oh, I like catfish fillets. I don't like them with the bone. They're catfish. They're bottom feeders, and they're <laughs> ooh, so gross, so gross. But okay, so we'll put okay. the chit chat aside for a second. Focus, center. Obviously, the breaking news is about Dylan Rounds. Let me pull up. Let's we'll start with him. Let's pull up. Here is from Box Elder County Sheriff's Office. This is the pre the official press release. It says on April 9th, 2024, ske skeletal remains presumed to belong to Dylan Rounds were recovered in the remote western Box Elder County area of Lucen. The FBI assisted the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office by processing the area for evidence and recovering the remains. The remains are in possession of the Utah Office of the Medical Examiner for confirmation of identity. So they haven't 100% confirmed it, but I mean, they're making this release and you'll understand. 
As mentioned in a press release in March of 2023, James Brenner was formally charged with aggravated murder and abuse uh, abuse or desecration of a human body for the murder of Dylan Rounds and the disposal of his body. Our hearts go out to the family of Dylan Rounds. We offer our sincerest condolences for the loss of their family member. We understand that the pain of their loss is immeasurable, and we want to express our deepest sympathies to them. It is our hope that they can find peace moving forward. We would like to express our gratitude to our deputies, detectives, volunteers, and other Box Elder County employees who have worked tire tirelessly investigating and assisting in the many search efforts during the past 23 months. 23. Holy cow. It just feels like it was just yesterday. We highly appreciate their diligent efforts, unwavering dedication, and commitment, and we extend our genuine thanks to them for their hard work. Um, okay. We are grateful to everyone who assisted and supported the investigation and search efforts on this exceptionally challenging case. The dedication and collaboration of those involved have been absolutely remarkable, and the invaluable aid provided to the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office has been in instrumental in the success of this investigation. No additional information can be released at this time so as not to compromise the ongoing legal proceedings. Doesn't it just feel like it was just yesterday that he went missing? Yeah, wow. It, almost two years later before they And it has to be bittersweet to his mm -hmm. mama, you know, like, at least she has some finality to it. Yes. And she can lay her baby to rest. Thank goodness. And honestly, the but another thing, you know, we talk a lot about the bad actors here. Dylan's case mm. was the, you know, it was just a saw a slew of bad actors from the very beginning. And there were people here in this very room, like Grandma Sherry, that were touched by it because of those said bad actors trying to connect stupid things like video games to those involved and all that stuff. It's just, it's just crazy what the internet will do. So he was buried deep or was he just out there? Um, so I've got the interview from, oops, hang on, I already started playing, from East Idaho News. Let's play okay. that. They're always really Oh, he looks angry right there. <laughs> he does. That does look like an angry picture. <laughs> of him. Okay. Um, I'm... I know. I'm so glad that they found him, too. So sad he was buried. Really makes you wonder about... Mm -mm -mm. It is heartbreaking. Granny <laughs> catfish. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, you win, Granny. Damn Granny. it. Kids. She definitely wins the internet tonight. Holy cow. Let's see if we can do Eaton at 1.25. I'm Nate Eaton with EastTitleHoodNews.com. We have some breaking news to bring you right now. The body of Dylan Rounds has been found. Dylan Rounds, his remains have been found in the remote area of Lucen, Utah. Dylan is the young 19-year-old who vanished over Memorial Day weekend back in 2022. He was a farmer. He moved to the desert town of Lucen, Utah, which is in northern Utah, kind of near the Nevada border, when he vanished. And his family tells me that this morning his remains were found near or in Lucen in a remote area. That's all the information that we have at the moment from his family. Of course, Rounds had been missing since May of 2022. The 19-year-old spoke with his mother on the phone right before he vanished, and his family has spent the past two years searching for answers. His mother, Candace Cooley, tells me that as part of a plea agreement with James Brenner, the man accused of killing Dylan, uh, Brenner led the investigators out to the site where the remains were on Tuesday morning, which would be today, in, in, uh, on April 9th, in case you're just tuning in um, or you're watching on another day. Uh, they got there, they found those remains, and they have been recovered. Now, Brenner is charged with aggravated murder and abuse or desecration of a human body in connection to Round's death. Let me show you just how remote this area is. That's where Dylan was farming. That was his camper. That was his truck. And you can see there's not, not much, much around, around this, this area. area. Uh, uh, it, 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 it really, really was, was a desolate, 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 desolate area. area. 
James, James Brenner, Brenner, this is the man who was facing those charges. charges. Um, he, he, again, again must have said, said something to investigators or cooperated or something. We don't have all of the details at this point, point. Uh, but they, they, they do have, have the remains because of, uh, of where James, James Brenner led them. This, this is a spot, spot where James Brenner had his camper. camper. He lived near Dylan Rounds out there. Both of them were in separate campers. And when, his, when Dylan's family went out to begin looking hey, for him in late May of 2020, yeah. they found his oh, there you go. right there behind that mound of dirt. What did it do? It's, it's echoing. echoing. And there was also a shed right by James, Brenner, James Brenner's camper. This is what that shed looked like. And within a few days of Dylan disappearing, James Brenner cleaned that shed to the, to the point of how it looks now. You know, it doesn't look very clean, maybe to some of us, but he did remove bags out of that shed, according to Dylan's family. And he did take those to a... Uh, an undisclosed location. And so all of this would, would likely have come into play if if there was a trial, it still could as far as evidence. Uh, but as I mentioned, according to Dylan's family, as part of some sort of plea deal, Brenner took the authorities to the area where Dylan's body was and they were able to find it. I spoke with Dylan's family. They of course are a lot of emotions tonight. This has been a, um, such a mystery since for two years now, but Candace did ask me to uh, convey, we thank everyone for their support and love. for two years now, but Candace did ask me to uh, convey, we thank everyone for their support and love. We are grateful we now have Dylan's body and can bring him home as we continue our fight for justice. And uh, unclear when Mr. Brenner will appear in court again. There was a hearing scheduled for this month, but at last check that was delayed. Uh, however, now with the recovery of Dylan's body, it could it could be had sooner rather than later. I want to show you on a map just where this place is because it's desolate. And when I say this place, I don't mean where Dylan's remains were actually found other than it was in the Lucin area, but that's a very large area. Uh, but this is where Lucin is. If you pull out here, you can see the Nevada, Utah uh, um, border right here on the left of your screen. And then over here is Montello, Nevada. Dylan went back and forth between Montello and Lucen quite a bit. This was another, if you want to say big town, it's not real big, but the closest nearest town uh, to, to where Lucen is. So he went back and forth between these two places. And in the early stages of the investigation, uh, there was a lot of, of look, a lot of focus on Montello. And then it seemed to shift into Lucen. Uh, I don't even know if there's a population count for Lucin, but if we, they do have an airport, as you can see, if we zoom out quite a bit more, this will give you a reference as far as where this is located. So over here is Tremont in Utah, Brigham City, Malad is here, Lava Hot Springs, Blackfoot, Shelley. So it's right over here. And uh, it's, it's quite, quite a distance if you were to fly from Idaho Falls, or start, excuse me, if you were to drive from Idaho Falls down to Lucin. But this is where his body was found, and this is where family uh, are breathing a, a sigh of relief now that his, his remains have been found. So you're on mute in case you're talking to us. I, I was switching back over, but thank you. I know they searched that area heavily, but... I mean, like, like you saw that there's nothing out there. Do you remember all the searches that they did out there? Did, did were you around then yet for Dylan's case? I was not <laughs> around during that time. No. Okay. I mean, I know of it, but not. I wasn't around during that time when it first. Popped it kind of does resemble him a little bit, Granny. Yeah, I'm so glad that they can get it. You know, his family can lay him to rest. I can't help the. I turn the volume up all the way. It's. Yeah, sorry guys. It's I will definitely drop the link to it though, so you can listen to it on your own. Um, I like that so in the video sense. he kind of gives like some backstory to it. Mm -hmm. For those who don't really know how big of a deal this is, they could kind of get an understanding of it. Tinker Boo, you nailed it though. It just shows you that there are so many places that people can hide a body, and it can be so hard to find. It is a very sad update. But also, I mean, it's also good, you know, some closure. They already had the initial update that he was deceased. So now they can lay him to rest. And 
I don't know if they get to grieve yet, though, because now they have to go through the court situation, you know, the court proceedings and all of that. And I just feel like if anybody watched the um, the interview room, did an interview the other night with um, why their name, uh, Steve and Christy Gonzalez and how like they just haven't had any time at all yet to grieve the loss of their daughter and who they considered a second daughter because they're so focused on the trial. And I imagine that Candace is going to be very similar to that. Like she'll probably be extremely focused on the trial and all the proceedings. And unfortunately the downside to that is it doesn't give them the opportunity to slow down and grieve. Yeah, Jenny, Jim Terry made a mockery of that case. It's absolutely, that's the first time I knew of who he was um, when he was going up on um, Doug's panel and he just made a huge mockery of it. Hey, stoned, but not alone. My girl. You watch something from Nate every day. Mm-mm. Well, that's true. It is a plea deal, so that she guess she won't have to go through that. But good point. Thank you. Yep, bringing me back into focus. Thank you. There still are a lot of questions. There still are um, some court stuff to obviously get worked out, to get solved, to get taken care of. This has been a case we've covered extensively on the East Idaho News since Dylan vanished. Um, in fact, here was a picture just at CrimeCon last year. They put up a "Have you seen me?" poster with all of these. Uh, nice messages around them. Uh, keep fighting. Love how his parents represent him. We will find you, Dylan. Uh, hold on to hope. And then there's these wonderful photos that his mother has shared with us uh, and on publicly on social media. There's little Dylan as a young boy feeding pigs. There he is on a tractor. He loved, loved, loved farming. Was big into farming, big into the outdoors, fishing. There he is. Um, I don't know if he's taking care of a sheep there. It looks like he might be. And here he is on a tractor, which... Again, he loves to farm, and that's what took him out to that location so that he could begin farming. He was raised in eastern Idaho. His father is still in eastern Idaho, Justin Rounds. And um, tonight, again, they have the answer they've been waiting for. They have. So I don't know if he explains it in the last minute, but the the plea deal, from what I understand, I do have an article I'm going to read through here. The plea deal, uh, part of that was for Brenner to show where the remains were. So they already knew he was deceased. That's what Brenner was charged with. Oh my goodness. When was it back in? Uh, was it March of last? Wasn't that long ago. It says it on here somewhere. I'll have to find it. But when he was charged with it, this then became part of the plea deal was to, you know, uh, the location of his body recovered Dylan Round's body. We will continue to follow this story uh, and bring you the latest developments. We have reached out to the Vox Elder County Sheriff's Office to see if they have any uh, any um, comment. What usually happens in these types of cases is they do they cannot confirm right away 100% like we know the ID. They'll send the body away for identification and then it takes a day or two to get 100% confirmation. So that might be the, the case in, in this particular case, uh, but we will just have to wait and see what they have to say. But we will keep you updated. And tonight, our thoughts, our prayers are go out to Dylan and his family. Such a, a big piece of the puzzle that's finally, hopefully, closed in and bringing them a little bit of a closure or at least some answers to the questions they have had for so long. I'm Nate Eaton reporting. Mm -mm. He was he was such a hardworking young man. If you guys remember, that was what Candace always talked about, was that he was so excited to graduate and go start his farm. And he just wanted to farm ever since he was a young boy. He wanted to farm. That was someone asked who's breathing like a mouth breathing catfish. That's probably Jonesen's dog. Uh oh. Um, yeah, I had to mute. Sorry. But I've never seen a plea just take something off the table and still go to trial. So that's a positive. Hopefully, he told the rest of the truth. I hope so. Yep. And hopefully, we'll get to hear that eventually as well so here is the KUTZ article that just came out remains presumed to be Dylan rounds found in remote Utah desert after missing for two years such a 
Such a good looking young man. Skeletal remains presumed to be those of 19 year old Dylan Rounds, who has been missing since 2022, have been recovered in a remote area of northwestern Utah. Officials reported finding the remains on Tuesday in Box Elder County near the town of Lucin. Round, Rounds was last seen on his farm in Lucin and reported missing on May 2022. In March, okay, I was right. It was in March of 23, James Brenner was formally charged with first degree aggravated murder and abuse or desecration of a human body for killing Dylan Rounds and disposing his body. Brenner, who lived near Rounds, was considered by officials as a suspect in Rounds' disappearance in July of 2022. Remember, for those of us who were here on YouTube, remember all the crazy conspiracies and panels and all that that were continuing to go around and round and round about Dylan from July on and law enforcement had it. They had considered him a suspect. They just had to build their case. According to a probable cause statement, Round's last signal to his phone was pinged to a loosened pond not far from where Brenner was staying. Box Elder County deputies were aided by the FBI on Tuesday to process the area and recover the remains, which were sent to the Utah Office of the Medical Examiner for confirmation of identity. Our hearts go out to the family of Dylan Rounds. This was in the statement we just read. We offer our sincerest condolences for the loss of their family member. We understand that the pain of their loss is immeasurable, and we want to express our deepest sympathies to them. It is our hope that they can find peace moving forward. And then they also thanked everyone for who supported their investigation in this exceptionally challenging case. Mm -mm -mm. I definitely hope that their family, you know, uh, that their family just can really start a healing journey once this is all over and, you know, find a new normal. Yeah, I hope they throw the book at him too, Proud Marine Mom. I really do. What it, Even if there is a plea deal, hopefully it's a, hopefully it's a very lengthy sentence. He could have revolutionized agriculture. Like, we just don't know. It was taken way too early. Who was the man char? Oh, yeah. Hang on. Let me find, let me see if I can find a quick timeline to just do a recap. Let me do that. Do you guys have any other thoughts on it? Um, not really. Just because I wasn't around when everything was really going down with his case. All mm -hmm. I knew was that he was um, being looked for by Jim Terry. Jim Terry is literally what brought me to Dylan, to know about Dylan Rounds. No, no, no. Yeah. And I remember Dylan's mom saying like, hey, this dude's a crock of shit. And I'm glad she stood up for herself. Yeah, me too. She did a great job. She really did. And she was out there in the forefront on all forms of social media. And you know what? She's another parent who, who took a beating by social media. Oh, Some man. Yeah, I remember that. And, and that was a lot due to Jim Terry, wasn't it? Didn't he, like, get a lot of rumors? Yeah. Started? Oh, yeah. He sure did. He sure did. This just goes to show you, man, like, y'all better stop pointing them fingers. Oh, check out this page. So this is. This is the Missing in America page for Dylan Rounds. Went missing from his farm in Lucin, Utah on May 28th, 2022. His family leads the movement to find answers to what happened to Dylan. On March 3rd of 23, James Brenner was charged with one count of aggravated murder and one count of abuse or desecration of a human body. Uh, he remains in custody. Dylan was born August 1st, 2002. So he is only, he was only a year younger than my daughter. Mm. 
to Justin Rounds and Candace Cooley. He is the oldest of their three children who all grew up living the farming life. And that was the thing. So they were divorced and people just dug into Candace Cooley and her husband. And it's kind of like what we're seeing now in Sebastian's case. They were, they tried to pit Justin Rounds and Candace against each other. I, I don't think Justin took the bait, but it was, it was wild. He's the oldest of their three children who all grew up living the farming life. Dust, Dylan loved loved it. He had big dreams to own and operate his own farm. In 2019, Dylan and his grandfather partnered on land in Lucen, Utah, for Dylan to start working towards his dream. He spent two summers getting his land ready to farm and in the spring of 2022 was finally ready to plant his first crop. He worked late into the night on Friday, May 27th, to get his seed planted before the rain came. Saturday, May 28th, that morning he spoke with his grandmother, and that would be the last time anyone spoke with him. Um, let's see. August 14th. What, hon? So, what was, so who was James Brenner to him? Like, was he a neighbor nearby? He was he just, just a, a neighbor. person. He was he a neighbor, property, right? Um, I I don't know if he lived on his property or if it was just near his property. Let's see if it tells us in here. I know they were right next to each other, but I don't know if it was on his property. Right. It could be. So here's the timeline of the disappearance. Uh a disagreement takes place between Dylan and Don, a family friend who helps out on the farm at times. Don was questioning Dylan's decision to work on a washing machine before a pump, and the result was Dylan and Don mutually decided to part company. On Wednesday, May 25th, Dylan tells his mother about a strange encounter with some guy who was barefoot and bloody along the roadside who wanted to ride to Montello. This person was later identified as... Chase Vinstrata. On Thursday, May 26, ECSO verified that Dylan was in Montello via bank account usage. On Thursday, May 26, Dylan's last phone call with both mom and dad. Uh, Friday, May 27th, eyewitness unconfirmed sighting of Dylan in Montello. Information relayed from police to the family, but with changing stories cannot be reliable. Oh, I like how they do this. Uh, Saturday, May 28th, at 6.51 a.m., a phone call took place between Dylan and his grandma. He told his grandma that he had to get his grain truck put away in the shop slash shed at a location five miles west of his farm. That was the thing, like, it was a ways away. To keep it away from the rain, and he would call her back. ECSO confirmed via cell phone data he was not at or near his farm in Lucent for this phone call. At 2.41 ECSO released the last cell phone data. It's a ping from an app that came from Dylan's phone at or near his farm. Um, on Sunday, May 29th, Dylan had not called his grandma back, so she called Don, a person who had worked for Dylan on the farm and a family friend, to check on him since he wasn't answering her phone calls. Don and Jim, farm helpers, tell grandma that tell grandma they go to dylan's farm and look for him but he is nowhere around uh, newly released information at some point during this day james brenner walked his horse to the train tracks the horse took off one way and brenner went the other way union pacific has been contacted to be on the lookout for anything suspicious and that came from doug's podcast uh at 10 p.m Chase Vinstrata seen on camera 200 miles away from Lucen. So then we have Monday, May 30th. Don and Jim have not been able to locate Dylan, so they let Grandma know. Grandma reached out to JD, Dylan's best friend, to see if he had heard from him. At 11 a.m., he had not heard from Dylan, so J.D. reached out to Dylan's mother to see if she had heard from him. She called around to other family members, and no one had spoken with him. Dylan's parents drive to the farm to see if they can figure out where Dylan is. A missing person report is filed by Candace with uh, BESO during the drive down. 
They arrived to find the seed truck had been put in the shed. Dylan's truck was at his trailer and it had been pressure washed. The seat position had been moved very far forward to accommodate a shorter person and that there were no tracks or footprints. 90 minutes into the missing person report and search of the area, VSO Search and Rescue locates Dylan's boots tossed behind a pile of dirt 100 yards south from where the grain truck is located. The boots are dry and not covered in dust or dirt. They have a dark spot on them that is assumed to be hydraulic oil. VSO Search and Rescue take the boots and places them in their patrol vehicle. Boots would not be sent to the lab until a week later. Uh, look how far, So the boots were quite a distance away from his grain truck. Um, Tuesday, May 31st, VSO denies the family's request to bring in bloodhounds to search the property. Family breeds bloodhounds and could easily set this up, but they denied it. On Tuesday, May 31st, family receives a call from a citizen of Montello, Kurt, who used to work for Dylan, stating Dylan was being held and as I remember that this this led to so much speculation here oh, that Dylan was being held in a specific location by Chase and another gentleman in Montello, Nevada, ES, or ECSO sent out six deputies, but he was not there and they searched the entire property. This event occurred immediately after the 20K reward had been announced. Uh, a key fob to Dylan's pickup truck was returned to Dylan's camp trailer by an unknown person while the family was in Montello responding to the above mentioned incident. Wednesday, June 1st, Dylan's pistol was returned to the camp trailer by an unknown person. It was found in the bathroom on the counter with the clip removed sitting next to it. The bathroom had been cleaned up the day before and Lysol wipes placed on the counter where the gun was found. So there is no possible way it had been overlooked the past two days. On Thursday, June 2nd, family is told they found a drop of blood on the boots. The boots had not even been to the lab yet. That's a stock photo of the boots. Friday, June 3rd. Brenner Spring cleans the shed as Box Elder County sheriffs watch him remove bags of possible evidence. Family ask BECSO, when do I call for a public search? And is told now would be the time. Man. So on Saturday, June 4th, Chase Finstrada was arrested in Dillon County, Utah on unrelated charges and he remains in custody. Search week number one. Searches in the area took place by BESO along with the Weber County Fire and Rescue with helicopters and airplane, ATV, horses, on foot search parties, and cadaver dogs. After six hours, BESO called off the search that Friday because they were 99% sure he wasn't in the three by five mile area search rate radius. And this is when I um, got to know the mob crew because he went out there and did a bunch of drone searches and he had some really great uh, drone footage. Sorry, I'm grabbing a drink. Um, Saturday with no, yeah, okay. Saturday with no help from BESO 200 to 300 search volunteers of all types searching on the Utah side, including five private air searches until they ran out of fuel. Diesel Brothers, they went out there too. They searched with their helicopters and took video footage of the tire tracks in the wash that later ended up being from a volunteer's truck who had been searching for Dylan. The pond on Dylan's farm was drained as, and searched as well. On Sunday, June 5th, family was given permission by BESO to take the pickup truck from the farm without any fingerprinting or forensic investigation. This resulted in all the data the truck had being lost because it only records and saves the last 100 miles. They did a shysty job on the investigation. Holy cow. Monday, June 6, Dylan's boots were finally logged into the police lab. On Friday, June 10th, Candace met with ECSO for almost five hours and they went through the case from top to bottom and agreed to offer additional research resources for the search. On week two, which would have been June 5th through the 11th, 
organized search looking for a particular bunker and it was found and cleared. Other areas of interest were also searched by all means available to ECSO and public volunteers. On Tuesday, June 14th, the Bonville County, Idaho, took Dylan's pickup truck into custody. Candace personally verified that. Wednesday, June 15th, investigation classified as a criminal investigation. And the FBI has officially become involved in the investigation. Saturday, June 18th, both of Dylan's campers were taken into police custody. Search week number three, no public search was held the weekend of 618 and 619 to allow for law enforcement and EquiSearch to conduct their activities without interference. EquiSearch had drone operators out in the area. Uh, Friday, June 24th, about 18 mines or caves were searched thoroughly as could be done safely by a trained team who was chose who choose to remain anonymous. On 6 2022 the reward increased to $100,000 for any information directly leading to the safe return or arrest and conviction of any persons responsible for the disappearance of Dylan Rounds. On Thursday, June 16th, law enforcement search served a search warrant on Brenner's trailer. During that search, ball ammunition, ignition caps, black powder, and speed loads all related to muzzle loading were located and photographed in the trailer, but the items were not seized at this time, according to the charges. Deetsy, if you need me to read, just let me know. Okay. Thank you, hon. So Saturday, June 18th, newly released information. Dylan's cell phone was found at the Lucent Pond by BESO Search and Rescue. On Tuesday, June 21st, Officers went back to Brenner's trailer with another search warrant and more ammunition, a muzzle loader, black powder, and ignition caps were seized, the charges state. Thursday, June 23rd, James Brenner was, in, was charged in first district court with three counts of being a restricted person in possession of a firearm, a third degree felony. Thursday, June 30th, James Brenner, 58, was charged in the U.S. District Court of Utah with being a felon in possession of a firearm. And then on Thursday, July 7th, in a joint press release, BESO and the FBI named Brenner as a suspect in the disappearance of Dylan Rounds. Mm -mm. So Friday, July 6th, Chase Finstrada, currently being held on unrelated charges out of Montana, was charged today with federal weapons charges stemming from a search warrant executed on 612 for an active homicide investigation. Chase has not been named, made a suspect in the disappearance of Dylan Rounds at this time. What the homicide investigation is, the court documents referred to, is unknown. On Friday, July 8th, uh, Chase Venstrada will continue to be held in Utah. Montana failed to collect him in the 30 days. The court will revisit extradition on August 12th at 9 a.m. But since he has federal weapons charges and the initial appearance is on July 19th, it's unlikely Montana will make any more effort to get custody of him than the last time. The court hearing for James Brenner on July 8th as well. Nobel tentative trial date set for September 12th on the federal weapons charge. Expect delays. It's almost always happens with serious charges. Search week number six. Uh, the law enforcement investigation into the disappearance of Dylan Rounds is ongoing. Law enforcement continues to be in the Lucen area. At this time, there are no organized searches planned for members of the public to participate in that are supported or authorized by law enforcement. We are asking the public to not search the area as it has the potential to compromise the investigation. Monday, August 1st. First, additional mines and caves were searched as thoroughly as could be done safely in pilot range by a trained team who choose to remain anonymous. August 1st, first was Dylan's 20th birthday. I remember this. Do you remember when she did the sunflower seeds? It was so beautiful. 
Dylan's family yep. paid tribute to Dylan by sending out black eyed Susan seeds nationwide and members of the Facebook group took part in sowing a seed for Dylan. Sorry, black eyed Susan. No, I thought it was sunflowers, but I guess it's black eyed Susan's. August 4th, the billboard is in Elko, Nevada on I-80 facing west for eastbound traffic. August 15th, Box Elder County Sheriff's Office had sent a request to Elko County Sheriff's Office to execute a warrant on the Nevada property of James Brenner. This request was denied for probable cause. Elko County Sheriff's Office conducted an independent investigation to obtain enough information for probable cause. That Elko County warrant was signed Friday, August 12, 2022, to be executed Monday, August 15th. The family was never informed by VESO they ever requested the warrant and were told this property was of no concern. Oh, um, that just talks about how they assisted with it. Search warrant was for a parcel of land in Nevada owned by James Brenner. The Box Elder County Sheriff's Office has named Brenner as a suspect in the disappearance of rounds. Personnel from the Elko County Sheriff's Office, Box Elder, and Search and Rescue used advanced searching methods, which included cadaver dogs, drones, and archaeological excavation procedures to process Brenner's property in hopes to locate information that would lead to the location of Dylan Rounds. No yeah. items of interest or evidence was discovered on the property during the search. Wow. Uh, Does it say in their deeds, like I was trying to listen and keep up with all the different dates and timelines and things, mm -hmm. but it never really says. It's almost like they were tracking Brenner at the same time as tracking a bunch of other people yeah. and it's they don't say what exactly was like okay boom th it's this one over here kind of a thing well they named brenner the suspect and they never named anybody else a suspect so i mean there's that it's just like they were on to him uh there's a few more pages left so maybe it says in here like what led them to brenner okay on October 6th, Heavy D Sparks met with Justin and Candace at the Shed property to fly a specialty drone for Equisearch Midwest. They interviewed inside the shed where Dylan would park his grain truck to get it out of the rain. Uh, the reward increased to 200000 on 1010 of 22. Here we go. October 12th, 2022. Update from Candace. Discussing never before released information. Dylan's pistol was returned by an unknown person to his camp trailer on June 1st. It was located in the bathroom on a previously cleaned countertop. The key fob was found in the same exact spot the next day. So they found the gun on June 1st and then the key fob in the exact same spot that now yeah. no DNA was found in or on Dylan's pickup truck, the grain truck, the key fob or the pistol and clip. Dylan's phone was found on June 18th in a uh, loosened pond by box elder search and rescue. James Brenner has been calling members of the round slash Cooley family from jail. He has had conversations with Justin and Karen rounds declaring his innocence. James Brenner's DNA was found on Dylan's boots. The ones that were found uh, behind the dirt mound, it, mm -hmm. which was on the very first. Okay, very first okay, day. Okay, that 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 makes sense. James Brenner has admitted to putting the boots behind the dirt pile. He said he found them near the shed. Phone pings of Robert Viles and Chase Finstrata show there they were nowhere near Dylan's farm or the shed property on May 28th, the day he disappeared. Chase was seen on video surveillance on the 28th at the Flying J in Snowville, Utah, and later that day in Clinton, Utah at a KFC. So can we can we yep. go back for a second? Could mm -hmm. you imagine being that family getting calls from this guy? No, I, I could. Like I, I could I, I like I almost feel like one side of me would want to entertain the conversation to get the answers that I'm looking for. But also one side of me would be dying inside because I'm talking to the person who has the answers that mm -hmm. I'm looking for. Like, God, that would be terrible. Could you imagine? 
just the taunting and, and you'll do anything. And we've, you know, we've talked about that when it pertained to Steve Gonzalez messaging Brad Norton, like you give them grace because they're willing to talk to anyone, review anyone, all the things to hear some sort of answer about their kid. Mm. Uh, okay. On June 2nd, James Brenner did some spring cleaning in the shed as Box Elder watched him remove four to five garbage bags of potential evidence. If you have seen images of the shed, you will clearly see significant mess that was not cleaned up as part of his spring cleaning. When Box Elder allowed the family to take Dylan's pickup, like, why did they let him just go in and clean? Like, well, the that's the whole for- reason Candace reached out to Jim Terry is because they were doing such a shoddy job. They were. I do remember that. When Box Elder allowed the family to take Dylan's pickup and drive it, they lost any data that was stored in the truck system. It is only recorded and saved for the last hundred miles. Evidence was present that James Brenner walked his horse from the shed property to the railroad tracks during the time period Dylan went missing. And then his horse went one direction and he went the other. I wonder what that's all about. I don't Um, get that. I don't either. I wonder what that's about. So on May 31st, Box Elder declined approval for bloodhounds to come and search the shed. And there's some equi-search. Midwest joins in on the on-site search for Dylan. You can see in the photos provided they searched mines and washes for any sign of Dylan or clues to what happened. Mob crew flew drones and a group of cadaver dogs were out searching as well. Uh, On December of 2022, Box Elder County turned off the water supply to the Lucent Pond. In January, Box Elder went out with an excavator, breaking up ice chunks and searching the pond. No new evidence was found during the search. Yeah, it did take long enough hills. It did. It took a long. I was going to see if she, they have so much here. I was going to see if they have the um, probable cause for Brenner. I thought there was something about video being found on his phone. I thought so too. Where does that that come from? So I was going to see if there was a probable cause on this site. This is a very detailed timeline. It is. It's very detailed. Oh, look at him. What a cute young man. And he's, they're driving red. Oh, I love it. Just look, a there's a catfish. Oh, a whole catfish. That's so cute. Oh. Such a promising future. I mean, just like, he seemed very driven to go and be, you know, to have his farm, right. do his crops. Like he, he talked to his grandma about going out to, you know, lay his seed and things like that. Like that's just why. That was For one what? of the things I remember was that, you know, cause not many kids his age are like, Ooh, I want to be a farmer. I'm so yeah. dedicated to farming. Like you can even see it in these pictures his whole life. He just wanted to farm, wanted to farm. Like he had a passion for it and, to know at such a young age what you want to do for the rest of your life, that's a rare thing. And to be so driven to do it, look at that cutie patootie. Mm. Dylan Hank, Dylan's puppy who continues to live with Candace. Okay. Lisa said the last time Candace did a public update last year, she revealed that they had recovered video of Brenner with the gun cleaning blood off of it. He was also covered in blood. 
Is it this one with Duty Ron? Well, no, that's back in 22. Okay, let me see if I can find the probable cause. That's October the hard part. There's 23. What, hun? I was going to say the hard part is, is, like you said, the family just wants answers, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes they're just out there just looking for any and everything that can bring them those answers. And, None yet. Do uh, you got birds in the background? Yeah, I'm, I'm outside. I'm sorry. I cannot believe it's still daylight where you are. That blows my mind. Girl, it's the sun is still shining. No, it's dark as hell here. Well, don't be jealous. No, Sorry, no I love reading. nighttime. I love my sleep. <laughs> I'm just reading through some of these things. Okay, here's a court document link. Let's see where this takes us. Here we go. Um, this is about the firearm. I don't know if it'll say anything about, wait, here we go. On May 30th, Box Elder County Dispatch received a call of a missing 19-year-old male, initials DR, who was last seen in Lucen. On this day, DR contacted a relative by phone. He was putting the grain truck into the shelter. Owned by Box Elder Land and Livestock. Owner's initials JC is adjacent to two other parcels. The adult male, James Brenner, has no ownership in the land parcels mentioned above and is squatting in a trailer located on the land. Okay. That's what it was that you were thinking of, Jones, and he was squatting. The missing 19-year-old male's property is a five-mile walk <clears throat> Excuse me, towards the southeast of where Brenner was currently living. Brenner and another Lucen resident were considered family friends of Dylan and his family. In searching for the missing 19-year-old Mel, Brenner was interviewed by Box Elder on June 7th. DH was also interviewed by law enforcement. On or about June 11th, Box Elder County, in their search for the missing 19-year-old Mel, requested assistance from the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Davis County Sheriff's Office. Uh, they executed a search warrant at the trailer where Brenner was living. During that search, we read all the stuff that was found already. Mm. Right what here. Is this? this is the probable cause for his arrest, his arrest for the firearms. Okay. He had the guns and they found the guns says that during Brenner's initial June 7th interview with Box Elder, Brenner brought three black powder guns over to DH's residence and asked him to safe keep them. When DH asked why, Brenner stated that he needed to do this for his own safety and that the last time he had trouble with the law, they took everything from him and he did not want the things he had left to be taken again. DH agreed to store the muzzle loaders for him. At the time of the interview, DH turned over the three muzzle loaders to Box Elder, who booked them into evidence. On June 21st, DH was again interviewed by the FBI. During this interview, DH advised that Brenner had also brought him a 22 caliber rifle around the same time he had brought over the muzzle loaders. DH told us that he didn't mention the 22 rifle when interviewed before because he had been owed money by the rifle's original owner and that he felt he should have a claim over the 22 that Brenner asked him to store to cover the debt. He explained to us that the rifle had been left in the trailer on the property where Brenner had been living prior to Brenner living there by a person who owed DH money. Brenner, upon moving into the trailer, had taken possession of it. DH knew that Brenner wasn't allowed to have firearms because of his criminal history. DH turned over to the FBI the 22 rifle and the case Brenner had personally handed to him and had asked him to store. The rifle was loaded with five rounds of 22 caliber ammunition. The 22 caliber rifle is a Winchester model 6922. On the rifle, it says made in New Haven, Connecticut. No serial number. Another search was conducted at the trailer where Brenner was currently living. During this warrant, Box Elder sees the muzzle loader, all that other stuff. Uh, he was sentenced to 33 months for the possession of the firearm. Mm, let me see if this 
this as its probable cause. No. Catfish a bit. I'm pretty sure they're all gone from the platform. All the Jim, Jim Terry people. Yeah, I think so. So, who was it that said it came from uh, her last interview? Lisa. Lisa, Lisa Oldman's. Is it Oldman's? I thought it was mm -hmm. Oldman's. Well, maybe I can't read. Oh, um, it is Oldman's. I'm sorry. Oh, my gosh. I was reading um, so long that the... All these, I'm going to skip all the way down to the bottom. There's no way I can read through all this. Um, can I? Yes, those are for the federal gun charges. Yeah, go ahead, Nanya. I was just going to say, like, there's no need to attack each other in the chat. Like, just be respectful. If you don't like somebody in the chat, then just block them. There's no need to, like, really tell them that you don't like them. Just be respectful yeah. of the environment that Deets tries to run. She has a lot of people from a lot of different places, and... We're not all going to like each other, but like no. we should be able to adult and get along while you're here. Yeah, just be, everybody, be be cool. Don't be uncool. Don't be uncool, dude. Don't be uncool. It's all good. And duty Ron in, yeah, October, November. They did do a lot of searching for him, Southern gal. I bet he is. I hope so. I hope there's peace for his family. Mm. Praise God and the people who found him. It was a lot, lol nerd, wasn't it? It was a lot. That was a wild one. Jenny said, wait. Southern gal said, being kind don't cost a dime. That's right. I misheard the Idaho dude. I had dirt pile in my brain. <laughs> yeah, she got I do remember there was, he had a large, that Dylan had a large sum of cash on him. Yeah, they found Did his phone. You said you heard that. It was, it was, I'm pretty sure it's what his mother stated. But I don't know where that ever went. Well, BHB solved another one. She said his name many months ago, right? And yeah. I thought, I thought, like, if they made that deal... Why did it take so long to go out there and show him? Um, just, I guess, getting him to go and do it. Oh, what? Mm -mm -mm. Oh, here, let me drop you the link. You can read it. No, like, if he made the deal, then he needs to do it. It shouldn't be up to him when. Take his ass out, which I know it doesn't work that way, but... Jail, Jim Terry was like if JLR and A Balance had a baby. <laughs> oh my goodness. I it's mean, true. honestly, if you think about it, it's that's a totally good comparison, true. in my opinion, if, allegedly. If you never heard of him, Rebel Soul, consider yourself lucky. Consider yourself lucky. Yeah. You could always refer to what was it, the Vanity Fair or <laughs> Yeah. The, or Ooh, no, the maybe other the rock one. and roll. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's a, a it was big Vanity magazine. Fair. Yeah, it was, was it Vanity, Vanity Fair? Fair? No, I, I think Vanity Fair was Betty. Betty was Vanity was Fair, and they did a whole article about him and the, about the families. It's Rolling oh, Stone. There Rolling it is. Stone. They got oh, it. Got it. it. The Rolling yeah, Stone article. Yeah. Yeah. Here, I'll drop the link too. I read through it. 11 months ago. Holy cow. Wow. It moves. Yep. Rolling Stones. So there have been a lot of public articles out there about tragedy pimps. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, yeah. You're, and documentaries. Good, <laughs> You're good. You're good, hon. Um, yeah. And documentaries. Yeah. I agree with Yep. He pro he probably just held out. He was probably hoping he didn't have to um, disclose it. Yeah, like because it they can't. He's days. the one that knows it. If he doesn't want to say it, well, like, they also would probably have to mobilize. You know, wherever mm -hmm. they're going to be able to do the search, and 
be able to preserve evidence and all that. So that, that probably is a little bit of a challenge to get equipment out to the middle of the desert. I would imagine. I don't know. I would agree. I mean, you saw how remote that was. It was very, very remote. So our family or our prayers and thoughts go out to the family for sure. Absolutely. Um, we have a new case to bring you Yes, on. we do. Well, new, kind of new, un- new to us. <laughs> our sweet so, Oki brought it to our attention. Shout Oki out to did? Oki News. Yeah, Oki did. Oki okay. I didn't know who. Like, I just got a text like, hey, come, come sleuth with us. So I came and sleuthed and it was fun. Let me see if I can grab... Why is it not showing? What are you looking for? My Canva. There it is. Uh, Can somebody drop Oki's link in the chat? I can get it to you in a second. Yes, this is the two missing ladies from Kansas. Have you guys heard of this case? I've seen that a few people are now starting to talk about it. When, uh, when, When did we dig into this? It was just the other um, two or three Whoa. nights ago, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had I had sent myself email, like I emailed yeah. myself links, like I don't know, like a couple of days after they went missing, and I kind of just because I was gonna do a live about them, and I kind of just sat on it and watched everything, and then Oki brought it up in the voice chat and Discord, and. Then you came in sleuthing and shambles hit the floor, passed out, you know, like <laughs> hallelujah. I get the sleuth with these. We had fun. we all had fun though. We uh, you know so we much just fun. dug in all night long. And but there wasn't a lot. I now I know that there is so Nancy Grace had done a live or a video on it, and then um Melanie Little, the attorney, Melanie Little, has a couple of live streams about it. And she did I a would, really good job. I would suggest if you're going to watch one to catch yourself up on everything, I would mm-hmm. suggest Melanie Little. Yes. Nancy um, had a few things wrong in hers. So I would just definitely. I still watched Nancy's, but I would suggest Melanie for all facts. No rumor. Keel said she read about it a week or so ago and looked into it a little. The news was giving, and it was, so there, that's the thing. So there, Shambles is like, I am deep into this one. You are, Shambles. There is a lot of conflicting things out there. Um, A lot of conflicting statements out there about this case. And so that's what made, like, the um, sleuthing kind of hard because there's not a lot of information from... OSBI. Melanie is great. We like her. Did that? So, no, the husband didn't find the car. So, first, we're going to start here. Let's start with the facts and then we can talk about a lot of the good night, Sasha, of the speculation. So, here's the endangered missing advisory. Um, it's for Veronica C. Butler. She's 27. She's five foot four, has red hair, green eyes. She was last seen wearing blue short sleeve shirt, denim shorts, and Hey Dudes. Hey Dudes are the most comfortable shoes besides Birkenstocks. But anyway, um, and then with her was Jillian Kelly. She's 39, has brown hair, blue eyes. She was last seen wearing whitewashed blue jeans, a long sleeve shirt, and tan or beige shoes. This endangered missing alert has been activated by the Oklahoma Highway Patrol on behalf of the Texas County Sheriff's Office. That Texas County is in Oklahoma. Veronica and Jillian were traveling together to pick up children. They never made it to the pickup location. Their car was located abandoned on the side of the road. Veronica had several tattoos, a Chinese symbol on her left forearm, a sunflower on her left shoulder, and Jillian has a butterfly tattoo on her left forearm. Any person with information related to the endangered missing alert should contact law enforcement or tribal authorities by dialing 911. 
So these are the facts that we can confirm on the case. Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly went missing on March 30th of 2024. They were on their way to Eva, Oklahoma from, I, I think I misspelled it. It's not Hogo. It's Hugoton, Hugoton, Kansas, in Veronica's blue Kia. Veronica, what was that? It's Hugoton, right? Yeah, I was saying SUV. It's SUV, Kia. yes. We do have a picture of it somewhere. Um, Veronica had court ordered supervised visitations every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. All parties were scheduled to meet at Four Corners in Eva, Oklahoma. Uh, the Four Corners, it's an abandoned gas station in Eva, Oklahoma. That might have caused a few problems. Just the rumors out there were just that, oh, they were supposed to meet at the Four Corners, and we're like, what the four corners that's like yeah five hours away we were so yeah <laughs> it was totally the wrong four corners now i think why people so the way we were able to confirm where they were meeting is it is in the court documents so it lists in there where they are scheduled to meet and it's every saturday like we said here from 8 a.m to 5 p.m and they have the location already set in stone. It's at this abandoned gas station. In the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere. Now, four will make sense in a minute. A random citizen recorded the police investig investigating the found vehicle at 10.30 a.m. So, how do we want to go into that? So, they were scheduled to meet at this location at 8 a.m. in Eva. The vehicle was found just five miles north of the scheduled meetup place at 1030 a.m. So two and a half, well, earlier than 1030 a.m. Because by yeah. the time this person recorded driving by and records the investigation happening, OSBI is already there. And from the best that we could ascertain, the closest place that OSBI would be coming from is like a 45 minute drive. So they would have had to have found it, I would think, earlier than 930 for the OSBI trailers to get there and be on scene when this guy's driving by at 1030. So the blue Kia that Veronica and Jillian were traveling in was found five miles straight north of the meeting location. And then we have since found out that blood was found at the scene and OSBI stated that they suspect foul play. Now, here is just a few, just to give you an idea, and I, I can pull up Google Earth here in a minute, too. So, Hugoton's up here. That's where Veronica and Jillian left from, and they were going to travel down here to the possible meeting location, and again, they were found just five miles. The car was found, not they. The car was found just five miles. You can see it down here, just straight north of the possible meeting location. And this image up here. Know. That's probably going to be one you can map later, but I don't yes. I don't know if people could see because um, see where your mouse is. Yeah, because it kind of blends in a little bit. Okay, I'm sorry, but we'll definitely map it out. Um, down here is the abandoned gas station that they're supposed to meet at called the Four Corners Service Station. <laughs> so here is Veronica Butler. She is the mom missing. Now, these other two individuals become important to the story. So Wrangler Rickman, he has two children with Veronica, and they are involved in a lengthy custody battle. It's a very lengthy custody battle um, over those two kids. Then Tiffany Adams and Tad Cullum. Um, Tiffany is Wrangler's mom, and Tad is the boyfriend to Tiffany. Dad left the kids in Tiffany's care. So the children were with grandma, with Tiffany, and we'll get more into that and why it's important in just a second. Do you want to read for a second, Jonesen, on this one? Yeah, I can. Okay, thank you. Okay, so facts about Veronica and Wrangler's custody battle. Veronica and her ex, Wrangler Cole Rickman, have been in a custody dispute over the children since 2019. In May 2019, Veronica was awarded sole custody 
Wrangler was awarded standard visitation. That was filed on August 25th, 2022. On December 7th, 2022, Wrangler was awarded temporary emergency custody because Veronica violated a court order which stated the children could not be around a specific family member. Veronica lied to the courts about the children being around this family member. That was filed September 25th, 2023. Wrangler left the two children in his mother, Tiffany Adams' care. We don't know what date they were left in her care, but we know it was prior to July 1st, 2023. From July 1st, 2023 to November 8th, 2023, Tiffany Adams did not provide visitation to either parent. So, grandma got the kids and held them from both parents. And again, like it says here, we don't, and all of this is coming from the court documents. I'll show you some of them in a second. And that's how we're able to know exactly where they were supposed to be meeting up was because it's in the court document, in their custody agreement, all that. So, again, those documents are very lengthy. And then part of them became sealed. And so we were only able to find a few small portions of the ones that became sealed, which became, in my opinion, are the important ones that might make it pertinent to this case. We're not quite sure if the custody battle has anything at all to do with the, the mom's disappearance. We have no clue at all. But what we can take from it is a lot of information like the meeting location the reason jillian was with uh veronica is because she was one of the uh appointed women that could be with her so it is important to look at this and Um, if they literally were sealed while deeps was mm sleuthing Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They like if someone had spot. looked at one and then we went and opened it back up and they were sealed. So, yeah, uh, I think some people were able to grab screenshots, but we have struggled to find like full screenshots to verify they're, you know, authentic. But um, yes, Tiffany is bio dad's mom. Correct. On November 25th, 2023, the supervised visitations resumed. According to a document filed on November 30th, 2023, the judge rules that if the supervisor is not available, Tiffany Adams must notify Veronica by 5 p.m. on the Wednesday before the visit. There are three alternate options to supervise the visits that Veronica can pick from. One of those alternates was Jillian Kelly. So that is very important in my opinion, just the fact that Tiffany, grandma, is the one who has to notify Veronica by 5 p.m. on Wednesday if the supervisor is not available. So grandma would have known and uh, Veronica would have known and Jillian would have known. They would have all known uh, Wednesday after 5 at least that those two women were headed to that location on Saturday. Yeah. And they were all due back in court in April of 24. However, we don't know what that was for. And I don't know if it's in some of the documents that are now out there misplaced. We're just not sure. And then Wrangler was court ordered to attend inpatient rehab on March 22nd of 24. We do not have confirmation from OSBI that he attended, but there is a statement out there Um, from a family member that he is there and that OSBI has checked on him. So that's the only confirmation we can take from that. Uh, Is Nanya still up here with us? She had a little bit better understanding of why he was in jail and all that. I don't know if you want to share that now. So originally he was charged with domestic violence charges um, against his now wife and his mother-in-law. However, those charges were dropped and the charges were dismissed because he was facing six years for it. So in lieu of that, he did accept to go to treatment and he had to sign himself into the Salvation Army Treatment Center on the 22nd of March. There is nothing in the court records that show that he has violated that. 
So I feel like it's safe to assume he was there during that time because that's where he was supposed to be at. And there is no violation. But nobody official, like law enforcement wise, has confirmed that that's where he is. So it's only coming from a family member, and I think it's his grandmother who said he is there, but mm -hmm. nobody else has confirmed. Law enforcement has not confirmed they that have he not. was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just reading through the messages a little bit in the chat. There are other, yes, there have are other church members that have given statements, but there's no interview of Jillian's husband that I could find. I. Did you have find one? Yeah, because so no. So they're saying that Jillian's husband gave a statement saying that like they knew her from church. The thing is though, is that um or Veronica, they knew Veronica from church, but mm -hmm. Veronica attended a different church. The only way that they yes. were connected is that Jillian was approved to be like a supervisor for the, the courts supervisors. for those visitations. Correct. And that's how her pastor knew Jillian's husband. Yes. And that's how it seems to be. That's the connection to her becoming that supervisor. It's a, what are they called? I don't, there has to be some terminology, uh, here, but the person the, who supervised the visits. Yep. So they're called. So here is one of the court documents. Um, it says, in the event, the approved supervisor, and these names are all the ones that are not redacted, are all out there in multiple interviews and such. But if she is unavailable, the inventor, Tiffany Adams, shall notify the defendant, uh, Veronica, by Wednesday at 5 p.m., and then the defendant shall be allowed to use any of the following as approved supervisors. So there were three approved supervisors. Um, they misspelled Jillian Kelly, but it is her. No, there were, there were actually four. So there was a main one. There was but four if total. she wasn't available, then the both sides had agreed to these three additional people potentially being pulled if the first one wasn't available. Mm -hmm. And Jillian was with her that Saturday because the first one was unavailable. Nobody knows why the first one was unavailable. That is not something that law enforcement has spoke about at all. And his friend that went searching with him and saw the car. That's this. Okay, I'm confused on what you're saying. I so we're gonna show that. Uh, I'll show that interview in a second. I think maybe people are reading it differently than how I interpreted it, but we'll show it in just a second. This is the other court document in case people want to, you know, screenshot these and read them. And this one just really goes over when they were supposed to meet up, things like that. Yeah, there's a lot of unknowns in this case, like mm -hmm. because they're being so quiet, that tends to happen. Um, but. These are simply just the facts. These are the right. only we're things go that into, are known. Yep. We're going to go we're into more. talk about the other stuff, too. These are just the actual facts that we can, you know, jot down and take note of. Um, there was, you know, like here it mentions that... Um, the respondent, Tiffany Adams, has not to date filed any action for grandparent grandparental visitation rights, nor has she filed any action to procure guardianship of the minor children. As such, her possession of the minor children is in violation of this court's order and the laws of the state of Oklahoma. So this is just, we don't even know if this was um, what the judge well, responded to any of this. We don't know how he responded to any of this. Yeah. Yeah. But it well, just no, we do. We do have we? the document after this, right? That's November 8th. Yep. So there's one right. from November 30th. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So we do know that the judge ended up saying, "I'm." So the first one says, "Hey, you need to produce the kids because you're not even supposed to have them." And right. then the next one says, "Okay, well, you need to let them. You need to let these vegetations happen. And if this lady isn't available, here's three other people that could go. Here's where the visits need to happen. Here's what the conditions are. This person can't be around the kids. Have a great day and start the visits back up." Mm -hmm. 
And then we don't have a lot on Jillian, sadly. Her husband is Heath. She is the mother. She is the mother of four. She's a pastor's wife, a secretary, and an administrator of the Huguenot First Christian Church. Now, um, Jillian's husband Heath is set to change locations and become a pastor at a another church in Nebraska shortly. I don't know what's going to happen there, but there are tons of articles out there, you know, talking about how both churches are praying for them and. Hoping all the things. I do have an interview. Okay, let me get rid of some of these that I have open. All right, let's go through. There seem should we do the OSBI press? things first or do you want me to clear up the husband thing because that seems to be a hot topic in the chat yeah i think yeah. that um i think it's like it's it should be made clear like this is the end of the actual facts of yes. this of this of this case everything else that's being discussed right now is like it's all speculation it's all there is no no actual law enforcement or court documents or anything that can back up a lot of the other stuff that's flying Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like this one is kind of falling into that um, information vacuum, too. Yes. Because there's no information being given out by law enforcement to an extent. And that has left people like thirsty to get answers. And so people are, you know, saying and, and throwing around anything. They're using text messages to prove that something happened when it like it's just a text message could have been made up. You never know kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think that this case right now is going into a, into an information vacuum because people are, they're kind of ga grasping at any piece of information to make it factual, but it doesn't make it factual in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yes. She did have supervised visits due to her brother being accused of assaulting one of the children. And she was ordered to not allow the children around the brother. And allegedly she did. And then lied about it in court. So that's why her visits became supervised. There is also, um, there's partial court documents out there. Again, they lack context. Mm -hmm. But there are some partial court documents that are out there on the internet right now that were put out. And there are some that talk about how um, the grandma was coaching the children. The father said that the grandma, granny, whatever you want to call her, was coaching, mm -hmm. coaching the kids to tell the therapist and the judge things. And mm -hmm. then um, on the flip side of that, there is documentation in the court documents that shows that a therapist was, you know, saying that these claims were substantiated. So I, I think that those accusations were still accusations. There weren't any charges. There weren't any, like, there wasn't anything finalized. So they were keeping the kids away for their own safety just in case. That's how I kind of read it. Yeah. I agree. You ended up in white boys chat. <laughs> so again, that is the end of the facts. And so now we're going to go into what family members have said. Uh, well, we are going to show what OSBI said. So that'll still be some facts, but it, we've already kind of highlighted it in that. It is a mess. Rebel. Gavel Geeks asked, um, oh, let me see if I can find it. Do you guys have info on the search? The search. Oh my goodness. There's not really a search, girl. No, so there's not. There is a local Kansas woman um, yeah, who it. is rock doing chalk. some searching. Yeah, Rock Chalk. She is doing some searching. Um, I don't know that there is an official um, I haven't seen anything. search kind of thing happen. I do know she's been out streaming and, and doing her search during lives and things like that and showing the area and stuff like that. Um, but outside of that, I have not heard of any searches happening in the area. The, mm -hmm. I think one of the challenges they were saying on, on Melanie Little's panel when she was on there, one of the channels they challenges they have is the space is so vast. Oh, yeah. And it's like to search that, like it, a search team would take forever just being able to get through one, you know, one little area kind of a thing. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest challenges that they have. 
Yep, just trying to narrow it down. So this here is really quick. And so this is going to be about the locating of the vehicle. And I think we can clear this little piece up right here by playing this. Investigating the mysterious disappearance of two women from Kansas who vanished while driving to Oklahoma. Senior correspondent Alicia Cunha has more from Denver. Alicia, what happened here? Hi, good morning, Dana. Well, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, OSBI, tells us there is no trace as to where these women went or what happened to them. On Saturday, investigators say the vehicle 27-year-old Veronica Butler and 39-year-old Jillian Kelly were traveling in was found abandoned in a remote area just south of the state's border with Texas. According to the pastor where Veronica yeah. attends church, she and Jillian were driving from Houston. So oh, you're, you're unmuted, Johnson. There you heard her said, according to the pastor where Jillian attends church or where Veronica attends church. See how easy it is to get them mixed up. So this is coming from the pastor where Veronica attends church. It's in Kansas, where they lived to a remote area just south of the state's border with Texas. According to the pastor where Veronica attends church, she and Jillian were driving from Hugoton, Kansas, where they lived, to Oklahoma to pick up Veronica's children to take them back to Hugoton for a birthday party. They never made it to the party. We're doing what we can um, to try to just piece everything together and find out where these women may have gone, um, who may have, have spoke to them right before um, they, they left their vehicle. Veronica's pastor, Tim Singer, tells us he got word the women didn't even show up to pick up the children. So he contacted Jillian's husband, Heath Kelly, a pastor at another church. The so Veronica's pastor, because she goes to a different church than Jillian is the pastor's wife of, two separate churches. He got word, and this had to have been quickly based on everything else we've pieced together. That pastor got word that they never even arrived to pick up the children, and he's the one who reached out to Jillian's husband. Y'all tracking with me? Two men drove the 40 miles us. He got word the women didn't even show up to pick up the children. So he contacted Jillian's husband, Heath Kelly, a pastor at another church. The two men drove the 40 minutes in the direction where they believed the women were going and came upon the car. But then, by then, it was surrounded by law enforcement. Pastor Singer says Heath Kelly and Veronica's fiance are distraught and in a state of limbo. So, so can they you pause go... for a second? The reason yep. why this doesn't sit with me right is mm -hmm. who in the world was no like who was notifying the pastor right for the Why pastor to go get so this lady's husband yeah. doesn't even know that she doesn't show up for the kids but this pastor gets but a the call the pastor is notified that is and it's a separate it's not the same church that Jillian right. attends and so it's like why is Veronica's pastor notified getting a that call they yeah yeah that part was odd to me when i heard that part i was like why would the pastor get a call? Like, I, like my pastor isn't going to get a call if I don't show up to somewhere that I'm supposed to be. Exactly. But I don't know, like, maybe she was in a program. Maybe she was super involved in the church, like, newer comings and goings. I don't know. Maybe she lived on church property. Maybe she was really close to the pastor and his family. I don't, I don't know, but that it's was just like very weird. It doesn't, there's no mention of the fiance being alerted. It just goes into the pastor of Veronica, the redhead, found out she didn't arrive at the designated pickup location and reached out to Jillian's husband. I don't think there's yeah. much more after this. So let me play a little bit more. I think they're doing as well as can be expected oh. under the circumstances. Of the By law enforcement, Pastor so, Singer says Heath Kelly and Veronica's fiance are distraught and in a state of limbo. I think they're doing as well as can be expected under the circumstances. The fact that they don't have any answers currently is um, weighing heavily on them. Adding to this, the car was found. Okay. I see Gavel's question. She said, yes, there are two pastors here. Two pastors. I don't, <laughs> this is where he's getting it. That's why I think others were getting so confused on this. Yeah. So Jillian's husband is a pastor of the First Christian Church in yep. Hugoton. So she's a pastor's wife. We're going to say pastor's wife. And then Veronica's pastor 
at a separate church was the one who was notified for, or from, we don't know who, we don't know who told him. We don't know how he found out, but he's the one who found out that the women had not arrived to the designated pickup location. And he contacted Jillian's husband, another pastor at a separate church. Clear as mud. It is. Yeah. It, it, uh, the area is super duper small. So them knowing each mm-hmm. other, like the pastors know each other. I think the town, wasn't it like only like 200, 300 residents um, or something like that in the county? Or it was mm-hmm. super small. Well, that's in Oklahoma. Oklahoma, there's only like 13,000 residents in the entire panhandle. The entire panhandle. We read that. But Hugoton is still very small too. It's a very small town. Um, yeah, and somebody said maybe maybe the pastor is her emergency contact, and that's possible, but, like, be? it's still, to me, is like, but who called the emergency contact? Well, actually, maybe the police notified him if he was the emergency contact. Yeah. Maybe the police notified him, and then he called the husband and was like, hey, I'm going to get you, and let's go to where the car is, because they do go to the car where they the car know. is, right. and when they pull up, the... Texas law enforcement County already law already enforcement there, yeah. is already there at that point. OSBI is not there at that point. Correct. Um, Hugoton has uh, about 4,000 people. So, I mean, it's not super tiny, but it is very small. Yeah. yeah that's... So maybe she was, he was the emergency contact. It's He is weird. not Miss Leah. His name is not listed on that list. No, we it have is. the unredacted one, and he is not one of the supervised uh, visit people. We don't know, Jenny. That's what we've been searching for is who notified law enforcement. The kids when the kids weren't picked up. Well, Katie B, the kids wouldn't have been picked up from her. And this was Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. So it definitely wasn't the school. So the kids were still with the paternal grandma. Allegedly, law enforcement will no longer like they won't talk about if they've seen the kids, if they've Mm -hmm. met with the kids, like if they've made sure the kids are safe. They won't say anything about it at this point. Um, but yeah, that's mm-hmm. according to court documents, she was going to go pick up the kids. Yeah, it says they were informed. They well, no, it says that they were informed that they never made it, the women never made it to the pickup location, is what it says. They were supposed to come back to Hugoton for the birthday party. Let's see. We can hear him say that one more time. Two and a half miles south of the circumstance. And it was surrounded by law enforcement, a pastor at another church. The two men, Sir Tim Singer, tells us he got word the women didn't even show up to pick up the children. Got word. I don't like how, I don't know why this new site like zooms in and out, but he got he word. Got word. The two women didn't even show up to pick up the it, children. Correct. That is so odd to me. Like, what does he you? have to do with that exchange? Yep. That's where we're kind of stumped. It's not even about, like, we could under, because at first we thought the same thing that, okay, yeah, if they were coming back for a birthday party and the, what in the world? It went to the next video. Um, you know, if they're coming back to a birthday party, then it would make sense. Oh, well, they haven't arrived and they're set to arrive on time. But once you really listen to what they're saying here, yeah. No, he, this pastor, Veronica's pastor, got word that the women hadn't even arrived at the pickup location. That is what's so peculiar to me. So wouldn't, could it be possible granny? <laughs> That's a possibility. We we don't know who informed him or why they informed him, but it would have had to have been pretty quick, though. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me see. Now I got to load it again. Marcus is a connoisseur of. We'll mute the. The ad. Katie B said, so who was the drop off adult? And why would they call the pastor? The drop off. The drop off adult is granny. Yeah. But we don't know if she's the one who called the pastor. We don't know who called Mm -hmm. the pastor. TurboTax. There you guys go. Okay. Let me see here. What kind of bias in favor of or against Gavel Your correspondent. Hmm? You have a little bias with Granny trying to shake it. Oh. All right. 
Let me skip a back ahead. Alicia Cunha has more from Denver. Alicia, what happened here? Saturday of the state's border with Texas. According to the pastor where Veronica attends church, she and Jillian were driving from Hugoton, Kansas, where they lived, to Oklahoma to pick up Veronica's children to take them back to Hugoton for a birthday party. They never made it to the party. We're doing what we can um, to try to just piece everything together and find out where these women may have gone, um, who may have, have spoke to them right before um, they, they left their vehicle. Veronica's pastor, Tim Singer, tells us he got word the women didn't even show up to pick up the children. So he contacted Jillian's husband, Heath Kelly, a pastor at another church. The two men drove the 40 minutes in the direction where they believed the women were going and came upon the car. But then, by then, it was surrounded by law enforcement. Pastor Singer says Heath Kelly and Veronica's fiance are distraught and in a state of limbo. I think they're doing as well as can be expected on the circumstances. The fact that they don't have any answers currently is um, weighing heavily on them. Adding to this, the car was found two and a half miles south of the Yarbrough School District, which placed all schools on lockdown yesterday and today out of an abundance of caution. However, Dana, the OSBI tells us at this point they do not believe that there is a threat to the public. Dana? Alicia, keep us Can posted. you pause Thank there? You. Yeah, that's the end of that's it anyway. Oh, okay, that was one of the big things is people kept saying like, but the schools are locked down, the schools are locked down. And the OSBI said in their press conference, like the, the superintendent chose to do that, mm -hmm. but the OSBI has confirmed like there was no threat to the, to the public, the kids were fine, but I think people were so freaked out that like these women are missing, somebody has got them, what's going on, that they wanted to be, you know, overly cautious for their kids' sake to make sure that their kids were at home and safe with them, understandably. Yeah. OG pastor is a spoke. We don't know. We have no idea who the spokesperson is. He just, you know, he gave the interview. I don't know if I would consider him a spokesperson. He just gave, uh, Singer is the one who gave the interview. It did say there that he is the pastor of the Assembly of God Church, and Kelly's husband is the pastor of the First Christian Church. Um. This was four days afterwards. So here's the important information. Singer added that the women who were from Hugoton were driving to pick up Veronica's children on Saturday to take them back to a birthday party. When he received word that they never made it to their destination, Singer said he and Kelly's husband got in a car and drove in the direction they believed they were headed, only to encounter their abandoned vehicle surrounded by law enforcement. And then everything else is, it's already in there. Um, they never made it. Previously said the women were traveling together to pick up children, but they never made it to the pickup location. And then all the stuff we've already talked about. Can I, um, Katie B said, could the person who called the pastor be the other baby mama when maybe she saw granny and kids come back home. What other, I'm trying, what other baby Wrangler's mama? Wrangler's wife. Wrangler's, Wrangler's wife that was wife, pregnant. Yeah. Um, I thought so she, she doesn't have any pregnant to do with them. Yeah, she does not live with the mother and she already has moved. She already yeah. left the state when the, when the incident happened with him. She actually has made mm -hmm. a statement. Um, that yeah. She's praying for the safe return of these women. But when the incident happened with her and charges were pressed against him before they got dropped, she left the state and moved away with her mother. Mm-hmm. See, so that's what I was thinking. Was I was not wondering there if that during was the this time. baby mama that she was talking about. Allegedly, let me say that. She so wasn't there during the time. They, they were only that's gone. Her. for So they were supposed to meet in Eva, Oklahoma at 8 a.m. Because that's what it says in the court documents. The pickup time is 8 a.m. At the Four now Corners. At the Four Corners, right, in Eva. They left that morning. A lot of people, I think, are also getting confused because there's, you know, the states are being mentioned. So it's like, oh, they're driving, you know, hours and hours. No, it's only like a 45 minute drive overall, like one way, 45 minutes. So they left that morning to go pick up the kids, to come back and um, attend the birthday party for the daughter. And then she would have had to have returned the, the kids by 5 p.m. that night because that's the court orders. But they never even made it. So they left from Hugoton and they traveled. 
me see. Down here to Elkhart. And then when they get to Elkhart, they go straight south. And Eva is down here. And this is where the pickup location would be. However, she says two miles, but I think we mapped it out and it's actually five miles. They were found, the car was found. I keep saying they, but it was the car. The car was found abandoned right here on this little triangle section I'm zooming in at of this curve. And it's just two miles, or I say two again, I think it's like five miles straight north of the Four Corners abandoned gas station where they are scheduled to meet up. And from, uh, do we have the link to that video, Nunya, of that guy where the guy drove by? I was just looking for it, but for some reason it wouldn't let me check my clipboard in the back. Hold on. Okay. So he, there's a gentleman just, he actually, I think you found out, Jones, and he was yeah, a TikToker. The Fox, um, the title for the Fox News video is, uh, uh, let me look it up for you. Let me look it up. Well, the TikTok guy, he's let me, he's in the, the TikTok list. guy is the one who recorded it and he gave it over to Fox News. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he just randomly happens to be driving past this curve at 1030 a.m. And he records this video of the investigation that's happening. I don't know if you guys can see my cursor up here on this road which is L Road. Let me zoom in a little closer. Right here, L Road is where the vehicle was found. And it kind of looks like the vehicle was found right over here at this spot. We don't know that for sure, but it looks like it was found over here. And it's already by 1030 a.m. on Saturday, it's already a full-blown investigation happening. They have like the forensic trailer out there and everything. And I sent you the link in DMs um, to the article, and they have the video. Um, the video is at the top of the page of the article. There is nothing out here. No, it's empty, empty. Like it is double weed empty. But the car wasn't found there. No, well, it was found down this road right but here. But you just can't go down that way with Google yeah. Earth. Yeah. But so, you'd have to go down, you'd have to drive down this little side road to where it actually meets another road where that, like, triangle kind of shape is. Where the triangle peak is, that's where they found the car. So, for me, just speculative, of course... I feel like that's not just you pulled off on the side of the road waiting for somebody linking up. That's like your car was driven down that way um, for it to be so far down. So that's concerning. Law enforcement has not released the condition of the car no. or any anything around the car. The only thing that they said is from the from what they observed coming on scene, they believe that there's foul play. So I know there's rumors of broken glass and blood and um, somebody was saying that there was uh, sunglasses like broken on the on the um, dashboard or something like that. But like law enforcement has not released any of that stuff. So that's all rumor and speculation. Um, Gavel, law enforcement was involved because of the car. They didn't know that these women were missing. Like, I guess. Oh, so, okay. Okay. So they're, I think they're confused on the, the timeline part of it. Okay. So we don't know currently, we do not know for a fact what time these women left the house. We are speculating that because this woman had visits with her children, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturdays, that she would have left with enough time to be there at 8 so she doesn't miss any time mm -hmm. of her visits. So that's speculative on our part. Correct. But nobody knows for a fact, law enforcement-wise, what time they left the house to go pick up the kids. 
The only thing we do know is when this video that Deets is grabbing, when that video was shot, it was 1030 in the morning. And law enforcement is all already out there. The OSBI, OSBI little trailer, like crime scene stuff, that's already out there. And that's at 1030 in the morning. Is and I think, the they, I think they said the law enforcement officer uh, seen the scene, thought it looked suspicious. Came up on that, the car and the condition yeah. of the car made them alarmed and they knew something was wrong. So they called it in. And then after that, they got OSBI to come out yeah. and take over the case. So the condition that they found the car in, this law, this officer, the condition that they found the car in was alarming enough to him for him to call it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. This is the one you sent me, Nanya, but it looks like the same one I just played. Is this it? Max Smith, it, anything's possible. The custody agreement was between uh, the missing mom, Veronica, and her ex's mother, mother. so the grandmother. The paternal be... grandmother. Yeah, the paternal grandmother. Uh, does it say something about challenging area or something like that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, and that's okay. the video. There we go. Let me. It's going to cut in and out from his video to them. Okay. It's just another one of those 30 minute, like, it's weird. The Fox News in Oklahoma does, like, the whole segment instead of little clips. <laughs> okay. Possibly Max Smith, who knows? The mysterious disappearance of two women from Kansas who vanished while driving to Oklahoma. Senior correspondent Alicia Cunha has more from Denver. Alicia, what happened here? Hi, good morning, Dana. Well, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, OSBI, tells us there is no trace as to where these women went or what happened to them. On Saturday, investigators say the vehicle 27-year-old Veronica Butler and 39-year-old Jillian Kelly were traveling in was found abandoned in a remote area just south of the state's border with Texas. According to the pastor where Veronica attended... Yeah, this is the one I just played. Hmm. Okay, now, maybe I yeah. found the wrong one. No, let me see. For those, are you, what? Hold on, let me mute. For those still um, catching up, Veronica is the one on the left. That's the mother of the children. The one on the right who lost custody and had visitation, supervised visitation. The woman on the right is Jillian. She was the supervisor of the visitation chosen for that meetup. I'm sorry. I did send the wrong one. I just sent the right <laughs> one over to you. I'm so sorry. Oh, I, I realized what the difference was right now. You have me check. I'm like checking I'm everything. So sorry. Like, what did I copy? And my paste bad. My bad. Wrong? All right. No problem. Fun. Yeah. 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 Get it together. <laughs> we, we'll let you pass on this one since you're. Sick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I did get fixed <laughs> though. So I'm feeling real good right now. Oh. Good, 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 good. All right. Once it gets through this ad. So this is going to have the guy that drove by at 1030. And he shows like a few little clips of the scene. It's the two women, Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly, were last seen. They left the Fugiton area last Saturday on their way to pick up some kids. Authorities then found their car abandoned just across the border in a rural part of Oklahoma. Tonight, we're getting a first look at the scene. Takes Jocelyn Schifferdecker joins us now in studio with our continuing coverage. Jocelyn. Yeah, well, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation says this case is extremely challenging because of where the abandoned car was found in a rural area off an Oklahoma highway. And we have new video that takes you there. Derek Relaford was going to the grocery store when he passed... So the best we could piece together from pausing through this several times is it this is possibly the the blue Kia right above the word scene yeah right above the word scene you see the telephone pole line and stuff and then all the investigators are back behind it I'll drop the link to this so you guys can you know do what we did and go through it slowly too and the enforcement cars from the crime yeah. scene trailer right there in yeah, the middle. The crime scene trailer. 
So that wouldn't be, so their law enforcement is so rural out there that to have a crime scene trailer that has to come from an OSBI satellite office. And this is kind of what Nanya and I were getting at to have OSBI already on scene. We looked up the closest satellite office that would offer those types of services. And it was a 45 minute drive from this location, not including the time it would take to call them, inform them of it, et cetera. So if this guy's driving by at 10 30 AM, then the Texas County uh, Sheriff's Department, whatever it's called out there, would have had to have called OSBI in that satellite office. I'm thinking no later than 930 for them to already be there and set up. So they would have discovered these women were missing or they found the car pretty quick, in my opinion. If the scheduled meetup yeah, time pretty, was pretty early on. AM, yeah. Yeah. And they're calling in OSBI by 930. It was it was discovered quickly. From different agencies, he took this video. And saw the abandoned car with the doors open and then the police presence on the other side of the At the time, he didn't know it was the abandoned car that Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly were last seen in before they went missing Saturday. Six days later, and they still haven't been found. Last seen in before they went missing. He didn't know. So... That is not the Kia. That is a, a police cruiser. These were all, we could verify the ones that we could see were not the Kia. And that's why we believed it was the the blue vehicle that was closer to the telephone pole earlier. Oh, it was the abandoned car that Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly were last seen in before they went missing Saturday. Six days later, and they still haven't been found. We're still working around the clock and doing everything that we can to um, to make sure that, that we can hopefully find these women alive. Investigators say it's an extremely challenging case because of where the car was found. It's gotta be some kind of... It's that car. On the side of a highway with no buildings in sight. See it right here, just to the left of the play button. I don't know if everyone can see that. Cell phone in there? We don't know. We have no idea if they had a phone in there. Nope. Is this They're yes? Being very hush hush on that. Mm -hmm. Evidence of foul play, blood, broken window, cut brake line, or other. Uh, it was something in, inside of the car, yeah, that they stated. Mm -mm -mm. Some of this has just been um, continuing to talk with people and just see where people might have seen these two women before they went missing. Some people are frustrated that there hasn't been any word, but the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, who is looking into this, says it takes time and it has made progress. Based on the evidence that we were able to find, it suggests that these women are were possibly harmed and that um, it is very concerning. Authorities say the two women left Hugoton on Saturday to pick up kids in Oklahoma. Investigators found their car just south of the Kansas border in Texas County, Oklahoma. OSBI believes foul play was involved because of evidence it found in the vehicle, but it can't say what that evidence is. Regarding anything about the exact position of the vehicle, what was inside of the vehicle, what was around it, that is still part of our investigation right now. And OSBI says it will release information when it thinks the public needs to know. It says as of now, there are no suspects and it doesn't think there's any danger to the public. In studio, Jocelyn. So that is important to note that they don't have any suspects. There are no named suspects in any of this. I didn't catch the first few times we watched this where he said the position of the vehicle. Like, what do you mean? Was it sideways? across the road the position of it I yeah he said the, yeah he said the position of the vehicle is it when he's talking yeah you don't think he means that like the fact that it's like out there in the that, middle of yeah, nowhere that's, land that's kind of what i took it as that it's just like hey there's i mean because there's nothing you mean out going there. north or south is that what you mean like no on what side of the road or whatever no, Just position, the, like, the fact that it's out in the middle of nowhere, that's alarming. 
Oh, no, I didn't take it like that at all. I took it like the position, the literal position of the vehicle. Mm, I just took it as it was out there, but let's hear it again. I'm on a gummy, so maybe I'm thinking too big. <laughs> at the time, he didn't know it was the abandoned car that Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly were last seen in before they went missing Saturday. Six days later, and they still haven't been found. We're still working around. Well, maybe I didn't go back far enough. Now I've gone too far. Here we go. Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation says this case is extremely challenging because of where the abandoned car was found in a rural area off an Oklahoma highway. And we have new video that takes you there. Derek Relaford was going to the grocery store when he passed this scene. Seeing dozens of law enforcement cars from different agencies, he took this video. And saw the abandoned car with the doors open and then the police presence on the other side of the road. At the, the abandoned car with the doors open and the police presence on the other side of the road. That's all he says about the position? No, not him. It was the news guy. Oh, the news guy. It was the abandoned car that Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly were last seen in before they went missing Saturday. Six days later, and they still haven't been found. We're still working around the clock and doing everything that we can to um, to make sure that, that we can hopefully find these women alive. Investigators say it's an extremely challenging case because of where the car was found. It's got to be some kind of... It's that car. On the side of a highway with no buildings in sight. Some of this has just been um, continuing to talk with people and just see where people might have seen these two women before they went missing. Some people are frustrated that there hasn't been any word, but the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, who is looking into this, says it takes time and it has made progress. Based on the evidence that we were able to find, it suggests that these women are were possibly harmed and that um, it is very concerning. Authorities say the two women left Hugoton on Saturday to pick up kids in Oklahoma. Investigators found their car just south of the Kansas border in Texas County, Oklahoma. OSBI believes foul play was involved because of evidence it found in the vehicle, but it can't say what that evidence is. Regarding anything about the exact position of the vehicle, what was inside of the vehicle, Oh, regarding anything about the exact position of the vehicle. Yeah, the, the exact of the position vehicle. of the vehicle. I didn't catch so, up the time either. So are they saying the exact position on the north or southbound side of the road? Or are they talking about the vehicle being across the middle lane, you know, the median? Mm -hmm. Was it just Sideways? in the middle of the road, maybe? Because or yeah. just in the middle, because that that does scream ambush. That does scream, hey, pull I over mean, for a minute. We wondered why how they found it so quickly, right? Because even though it is an extremely rural area, um, and there's nothing around obscuring your view, not I, I don't think that there's a ton of cars traveling down that road anyway, for one, and for two. You don't always just stop for a car that's parked alongside the road, especially when you don't see anyone no. in it. But if it's stopped in the middle of the dang road. With the doors open. It, yeah. I mean, we don't know. The doors could already been open, you know. So right. it could have been somebody um, whipped in front of them and stopped. So they were know? coming around the curve. Yes. But the car was actually found off to the side hang on let me switch back over to google earth it wasn't found on the road that they were traveling on it was found just slightly off that road on l road so, which is a which looks like it's just like a connecting road a connector road right. so they were traveling down this main road here in this direction, they're he heading southbound, which is actually pointed up. Where is here? Screen. Where is here? I don't. Can you not see my cursor? It's hard I to can't. see it. It blends Hang in. Hang on, let me do. Let me do. Can you can you use the colors like? Yep, right here. The green and. Oh, I was no. meaning more like. Paint. So where the two no, I was meaning more like okay, where the two red triangles come together on the going east to west is road L. Going north to south 
is Highway 95. Mm -hmm. And that little dirt road. So the little, the car is found on that little red triangle there. The car is found <laughs> on the left hand peak of, peak of that, right? Yes. Hang on. Let me go Sorry. Just, I know, I know. She hates the <laughs> color examples, but like I'm just saying, she's like, look right here, guys. <laughs> well, I I thought people could see the cursor like moving. Like so definitely not like, maybe maybe the chat is gonna say that. I mean, can you guys see the cursor when I'm, I'm moving it, or is it just none of it can't see it? Is it just me? No, I can't. I can barely see it. I have to track it. Okay. It's like the cursor blends in. Okay, Yep can see yeah. it. I, oh, y'all can see it? Maybe we're just blind, Nunya. Maybe that's it. Okay. Okay, so here is north. Now, it, now we've got it positioned right. The cursor's up here. Do you see it, Nunya? I'm circling I it around. I see it. Okay, so they're coming down this road. They don't go past the curve. They turn onto this road here, which is L Road. The road that goes left to right. Now, At the top of the little triangle. There you go. Right. They're over here off of the main road that they were traveling. Their car is found off of the main road that they were traveling on. Now, we believe, based on that gentleman's video, it's found over here. I'm circling it so you hopefully can see it moving in this location. This is just what appears to be a dirt road that does connect L Road back down to 95. Mm -hmm. but their vehicle is found over here somewhere. That's pretty perfect, isn't it? That it leads back to the mm -hmm. 95 opposite direction i'm just saying okay they can see it okay everybody can see that yes so they're traveling southbound now let me zoom out a little bit here and they are just five miles from where they're supposed to pick up the kiddos down here is where their pickup location is. Let me go out a little bit further. You can see the. Uh, it's really hard to get them both on the same screen. So there's the pickup location. There. Pickup locations down here at the very bottom where I'm circling. And then the vehicle is found right there. Now I can drop a pin. So here is pickup location. And here is the found vehicle. Why does it not let me add both of them? There we go. Nope. Let me change them to bright red so you can see them better. There's mm -hmm. only one. Hang on, I gotta, yeah, I had to go back and add it again. Change it to bright red. There you go. You see them both now? Yep. Yeah. Oh, it won't let me. That's as close as we can zoom in and see them both. So they were almost to their destination. Like the news said two miles, mm. but when we mapped it out, it was it's five miles and it is a straight shot. The road just would continue on. Um, so it's too far north. It, yes, the car was found five miles north of where they were supposed to pick up the kids. And then let me show you grandma's location <laughs> in our opinion allegedly <laughs> oh it is her location let me see i gotta this zoom for sure in. her location i gotta zoom in to see it because are we still that. on the facts portion <laughs> no <laughs> no we're on no. to the news portion it's Hang a on. little it's a little mixture of both 
now I'm just sleuth in to show you. I got to find the road where it turns off and try follow that down based on memory. Okay. Right down here. Let me keep going. Because we need, we need to discuss. Uh, I think it's this one here. A little bit of the craziness from Grandmammy. So, okay. Right there it is. What? There it is. Okay. I don't want to put it in. That's why I'm not typing the address in. Yeah. Um, but let me do this. And we'll make grandma yellow. And then let me zoom back out for you. There oh, you go. Wow. I'm no gray hues on maps, but here we go. Yeah, so the top <laughs> red dot is where the car was found. The bottom red dot is where they were supposed to be arriving for the pickup exchange. And the yellow dot is where grandma's house is located. Southern gal, the kids are still with the grandma, the paternal. We room. don't know where they are. <laughs> yeah, the best. Yeah, yeah. We're, oh, we know sorry. OSBI said that they have <laughs> eyes on them and they're okay. That's like. They're safe, right? Yeah, that's the best we got. But we don't know what that means. Um, and again, reminder, no one is named a suspect at all, but the kids would have been coming from grandma's house. We're just going to call her granny from granny. And <laughs> this is how close it is. I mean, and I know we were questioning, you know, why wouldn't, a Ver you know, why wouldn't Veronica just go pick them up from there? Well, you know, the court does, the documents do state the designated pickup location, and it would make sense. There's nowhere out here that is like a super public area. It's not like there's a police station out here. There's not a grocery store. I mean, the most public area within, you know, five miles of granny is an abandoned gas station so it just seems like that was the spot they designated for mm. the pickup location that's crazy man yeah How we have no clue if granny is shady all we have to go off of is the court documents and there are some statements made by her son in the court documents whether they're true or not we don't know so can we clarify one thing Yes. Grandma was not given actual custody of the children. Correct. Grand, uh, the dad was given custody, temporary custody of the children. Mm -hmm. And grandma, where he was staying at at the time, kind of took it over because dad was not participating in being an active parent at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So while the kids were with her, they were not in her actual custody. Right. But didn't at some point, didn't he request for them to be back with mom? So not original, mom? that's in the original agreement. The original agreement that they came to. Yeah. Mom was, which was in, I think, was it 2021 deets? Um, I think it was never... 2021s. But at that point in time, he gave, he wanted to give full custody to mom Mom wanted custody, but him to still have visitation, and that's what the judge ruled for. Okay. This time around, there's current, there's other documents out there. They are only partial documents. Yeah. So there is a partial document that talks about some abuse that a child in this in her household had received from a family member. It does say that it had that it was substantial evidence given by the therapist. But there is no document that shows what the court's finding was as far as that abuse goes. There are no charges that were brought up against the family member either. So there's that. There is another partial court document that was put out where um, there's a phone call that happens between mom and dad back in September of 2023. At that time, dad says he wants the kids to go with mom. And he doesn't want them to be with, with grandma, but grandma is telling him what to do and telling him that if he doesn't do what she wants him to do, she'll, um, she'll take his life. 
And um, then he basically in the court document says that um, he he knows for a fact or he believes for a fact that grandma is coaching the kids on what to tell, you know, other people um, to help them stay with grandma. Mm -hmm. But these are all they're just partial pieces. So, you know, if it's yeah. just a partial piece, you lack some context. It could be totally different than how it's looking because it's just a partial piece. So and and unfortunately, we can't get the whole piece because they have sealed the record to to get a full context. They've only sealed that Porsche from what December of 23 on is sealed or November. Well, we got through November of 23. So, yeah, something that happens in December changes things but some people were able to grab it before they sealed it so that's where some of these partial pieces come from but like Nanya's saying you have to take it with a grain of salt because we can't see the full thing i know this yeah. is blurry blown up this big this is one of those partial pieces yeah and i wish if anybody has the full the full court document of this i'd love to read it it says the defendant and the plaintiff have had a telephone conversation that took place extremely recently. That's in September of 23, wherein the plaintiff admits that he never disapproved of any of the supervisors that the defendant has chosen for her supervised visitations and that it was his mother that would make the decision and he felt compelled to listen to her. The plaintiff further stated that he had been threatened numerous times by his mother that she would kill him, shoot him in the head if he didn't do what she told him to do, that he would send the plaintiff copied and pasted text directly from his mother as if it were him, that the plaintiff believes his mother has cops in her pocket. Most importantly, the plaintiff admitted that he believes that his mother coaches and has coached the subject minor children before dropping them off with their current counselor. And that's the counselor's name I redacted. Again, it's just a tiny piece. A tiny piece, yeah. Yeah. And we don't know what, again, what else is in that one. Um, the next one that's a pretty wild rumor, and it's, I believe, being spread kind of by locals. So at some point in time, the granny is in court, and basically tells the judge that if she um, loses, you know, lo loses the physical custody of these children, that uh, what does she say? Heads are going to fly. Bodies are going to drop. Bodies are going to drop or bodies oh, people are going to fall. People start dropping like mm -hmm. flies. That's what it was. I think you have a screenshot of it. Um, so they have had to allegedly put the judge on... Um, she has a state trooper that goes to work in home and kids events with her to help keep her protected during this time. Oh, um, yeah, Let me load that. But that's all alleged. Again, there's nothing in the court documents that we could find where that was stated. Um, no transcript is, is available at this time to put that. That's just been what locals have yeah. said by seeing the judge at a soccer game with the state trooper, you know, bodyguard. So this is just, yeah, right here it is. This is just a rumor from mm -hmm. YouTube or uh, Facebook. It's another piece. If people have that full document, we'd love to read about. I know I saw that Ashley said Melanie has the full documents. Are they the newer ones? Because w we have the full case file from, like I said, November 20, 2023 prior and I know her video, her life wasn't too long ago, So, but I'll skim through there again. I didn't see the ones I was looking for, um, but that doesn't mean I didn't miss them. Um, I don't know that she cared a lot about those kids, but that's not yeah. what this is about. What would she do for those kids? Did you hear what she threatened the judge of Boise City with last week? Uh, if I lose my grandbabies, everybody is going to start dropping like flies since Saturday. The judge has had constant state trooper presence at her home, work, and her kids' events. She even had to have a cop with her at the Beaver Track meet the other day. To what extent is Tiffany willing to go for her grandbabies? So, again, that is just pure speculation unless we can find some court documents on it. Yep, it so she's going to grab you the Melanie little time stamp where she read 
where she showed it. Okay. So she might have shown it before they sealed it because I know that yeah, one of her lives she, she did do before the seal. Mm hmm. It's messy. Okay. So while she's grabbing that, why don't we share um, the longer, the extended interview? Let me see. All right, babe, I'm going to jump down. I got to get have some a great rest day. before work. I'll Good be night. in chat, though. Good night. Right. Lullaby me to sleep, babies. Okay, we'll talk you to sleep. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the an extended interview with OSBI. I think this is the oldest one, right? This is seven. Yeah, this was a week ago. Oh, excuse me. I got the hiccups. Hi there, Kay Clan. Danette Wallace here, wanting to give you a quick update on the investigation of two women missing from Southwest Kansas. A developing story, a big story from the weekend that so many people have their eye on, and this is what is taking place. So I just got off the phone having a Zoom conversation with the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, and they're walking me through everything that had taken place since they got involved. They're the lead agency looking into things. A lot of agencies actually taking part into the case of these two women. So we have Veronica Butler, and Jillian Kelly, again, women in their 20s and 30s from Hugoton. And so they were heading into Oklahoma to go and pick up Veronica's kids. At least that's my understanding of the situation. But they never got to that place of where they were heading to. We do know that they left Hugoton on Saturday morning, and then their vehicle was found in Texas County, Oklahoma. So past the state line of Kansas into Oklahoma, that far northwest part of Oklahoma, the vehicle in this rural area, the vehicle abandoned. So I had a chat with OSBI, Hunter McKee, about what he can tell us about what they're doing in this investigation, how the vehicle is found, their concern for these women. Let's take a look. And so Hunter, we're talking about the case of these two women who went missing this weekend, Veronica and Jillian. A lot of concern from people from Southwest Kansas and certainly from the Northwest part of Oklahoma as well. Walk me through what you know about this investigation. Well, I think that um, any time that you have a case like this where you have two women um, who um, all, all of a sudden they're, you know, Vehicle was found in a very rural part of the uh, North Texas County area um, here in Oklahoma. Their vehicle was found, but they're they're nowhere to be seen. Um, and us, along with other local law enforcement agencies, are still working to track them down. It is um, definitely concerning for um, a number of, of people in that area, in the north northwest area of Oklahoma, and especially that south area, uh, southeast southwest area of Kansas. Um, so. Right now, I can say that we're doing everything in our power to to track down uh, these these two people who went missing. Um, this all started on, on Saturday, by the way. It was the Texas County Sheriff's Office um, on March 30th, uh, Saturday, that located uh, their vehicle. When the vehicle was found, but the women were not inside and they knew that they had occupied the vehicle previously, that's when they contacted and requested the OSBI to investigate that. Um, again, this was 27-year-old Veronica Butler and 39-year-old Jillian Kelly. Um, and as we said, they're... So there he talks about how local law enforcement found the vehicle. We don't know if they found it because someone called it in or what, but that's like the only answer that I have heard out there on who found the vehicle. I don't, I don't think we, we haven't found anything else. their vehicle. Um, it was found abandoned. So this was near uh, Highway 95 and Road L. This was just south of uh, Elkhart, Kansas, um, very rural northern part of Texas County. Um, when the sheriff's office requested the, the OSBI, our agents went, went up there that day to investigate uh, where this vehicle was located, try to piece together as much as they possibly could uh, to try to, you know, determine what may have happened uh, to both of these people. Um, Right now, we, we can't say what the exact relationship is of, of these of these women, where they were going exactly, and what the circumstances may have been leading up to whenever they did go missing. Um, but we're doing everything in our power right now to try to find find out what may have happened, um, just to try to do uh, what we can to not only not only to find these women, but to to assist our local law enforcement agencies up, up there too. We're all working um, around the clock right now since we've been requested, and uh, doing everything we can. Um, you know, like I said, when OSBI special agents got this, along with the local law enforcement agencies there, including Texas County Sh uh, Sheriff's Office, um, you know, as soon as we started kind of going through what we know so far and, and what we're trying to find out, we're asking that anybody with um, any information on what may have happened, if anybody had seen these two women before they went missing, if anybody's seen them since, um, we really need people to contact the OSBI right now to allow us to kind of 
really try to find out what may have happened. There's two ways that they can do that. They can contact the OSBI. They can reach us at tips at osbi.ok.gov, as well as 1-800-522-8017. Um, and again, um, doing everything we can to find these these two women and, and hopefully um, uh, right now, you know, we're calling this a suspicious disappearance because as soon as you find a vehicle in the middle of, of, of really nowhere that, you know, was uh, was occupied by two women um, and then those two women have really vanished, um, it's it's concerning for us as well. Um, so we're really trying to figure out what may have happened and doing everything we can to find. Can you talk about the manpower? So at this point, you'll note that they weren't saying foul play was involved just yet. So it did take them a few days before OSBI starts to say that foul play was involved. Behind everything, like, I mean, I know multiple agencies, certainly for Southwest Kansas, Duke Temple Police, where they're from, involved here, Texas County, you all, like, are there a lot of different units deployed to this? What type of searches are taking place now? There are a tremendous amount of, I mean, again, not only the larger agencies like the OSBI, like ourselves, like the sheriff's office, um, uh, OHP is assisting us with this as well, but so many of the local law enforcement agencies there, people have to understand that, um, you know, two people just going missing um, like this does not happen in that that area very, very, very often at all. So, of course, when this came out and the, the search began, everybody did everything they could, and this became a... Uh, priority for so many of these agencies in, involved in this. And, um, you know, again, when we're talking about local ag agencies there, not only the, the sheriff's offices, the police uh, departments, um, agencies up in Kansas um, have, have, have stepped up and, and helped as well. So in that Northwest uh, panhandle corner of Oklahoma, I mean, it's everybody that has stepped up and doing everything they can to, um, to try to find these women. Yeah. I, I mean, it's got to mean a lot to the people who are certainly involved, people from their families, their churches, um, just our hearts certainly go out to those people and the law enforcement too who are working so hard i assume boots kind of on the ground is there anything in the air for these searches and all that with like the state highway patrol and all that too yes um no. yes there's um there, there's all different kinds of searches um the the technology that we're able to um to equip ourselves with it's all being used um within that entire area now again what makes it difficult is this is a very rural area like like we had mentioned but um i mean we're talking about people who who are on the ground looking um um, you know, possibly drones, uh, anything that we can use that we can get our hands on to kind of just make sure that all of that surrounding area is being looked at as um, as uh, closely as it possibly can. That's something that, uh, that that we're using. And again, every law enforcement agency that is that is assisting with this is using their own uh, uh, technology and equipment in order to kind of look through um, uh, this area. But again, it's a rural area. Um, there's a lot of ground to uh, track at this point uh, around where that vehicle was found. So really just doing everything we can to to make sure that we are um, looking through every spot in that area. Can you comment on like the condition of how the vehicle was found and everything? And was that discovered by like Texas County, like authentically, like they just saw it like abandoned? Or was this after Hugoton police put out like, you know, hey, we're we're looking for these people in this vehicle? I can tell you this, that right now we can't comment on what the uh, Texas County Sheriff's Office, on what kind of call that they received in order to respond to that area. I know that, of course, like I said, they called us, we were requested, and as soon as that happened, we knew that there was a uh, abandoned vehicle with women missing. And at that point is when we um, began our uh, comprehensive investigation to try to help the, the Sheriff's Office as, as best we can. But again, circumstances that led up to these women being, you know, going missing, um, where they were going, where they were coming from, exactly. All of that is still part of our investigation right now. And Are there what, any additional? Oh, no, please go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, that's what that's what makes this tough right now. It's like, mm -hmm. is that our, our agents are still looking at exactly what had occurred, um, why they were driving on this road, where exactly they were going. So all of that is still being um, looked at at this time. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, it's certainly, I mean, we, we, um, a lot of people have questions, certainly. I know there's not, not a whole lot you can say in, in regard to that all because we're we're not here to speculate. We just want to help. But again, if, if people are, like I feel like our community online, it really, to me, I mean, time is really important with cases of any missing people. Um, but to see the shares that people have on this case and to see the, the collaboration of law enforcement, I think it does speak volumes to the, the desire for any outcome and hopefully a positive one. Yeah. That's what I took from it too, Gavel, that there was... Something. So this is just me, what I take from what he said, that Hugoton had put out 
something about these women not making it to their destination, whether it was the husband that called one of the husbands. Well, we know it wasn't the Jillian's husband because he was alerted by the pastor. So maybe it was the fiance that called it in. But some somehow Hugerton got word that they hadn't made it to their destination and they had contacted someone in Texas County and they were searching. That's kind of how I took what he said. But the way he says it, it's not 100% confirmation either. See, and he, he actually kind of switches this up a couple of times. This is the uh -huh. oldest one. And when yeah. you get up to, like, the newest one, like, now he won't even say how it was found. But yeah. um, he says that it's in the next one, like, I think it's the next one. But he says something like Texas County found it. Yep. And like, so it's, it it's very odd, like, how, very... even, like, even law enforcement, like in this interview, he's very free flowing with information, but as it goes, like he starts to be more and more tight lipped. Like he, some of the stuff he was saying in the first interview, he won't even answer in the reporter's questions in the press conference, which he had already answered here. It was weird. I, I haven't seen that before. Yeah. Wait till you guys hear. It is very bizarre how, how they become more and more tight lipped and eat, like kind of, you know, typically you'll hear them at least confirming the things they've already confirmed and he doesn't do that moving forward. It's weird. Yes. Um, I, I think that not only, I mean, of course, I've talked a lot about the local law enforcement agencies that are helped us that have helped us out with this case and the search. But as you had mentioned, the, the people in, in that area, they, they want to know what had happened and they care about, about these two people. Um, they want, you know, we're all hoping for the uh, best outcome in this search. And, um, you know, I think that a lot of the residents in, in Texas County and those surrounding Panhandle counties, even that southern uh, Kansas area, um, they're all doing what they can. I can tell you this, that our press release, when we put this out yesterday, within about 40 minutes, had close to um, 800 shares. Um, mm -hmm. And that just shows the amount of people that saw this and who really care and are willing to do what they can to help us out and help the local law enforcement agencies there to track these these two people down. because. Um, you know, like I said, it's it's very important to them, and we're all hoping for uh, the best outcome in this search. When looking at the the information you all put out, and Huguenot police put out information just the day before too, um, warning and you know letting everyone know about this um, this case, what's going on. Um, I'm sure some people with a talk online and everything, they're worried for folks who live in that area too. Is there any alert or anything that we need to know about? Is there any concern for people who are out in that part of Northwest Oklahoma? There is, there is not. Um, okay. when, now, if it gets to a point where they're, again, if it, if it ever gets to a point where they're, we, we will definitely let people know. But as of right now, there is not, not a reason uh, for concern. And um, again, we're still looking through all of this to see if somebody else could be involved. And if somebody else is involved, we will definitely let the public know. Okay. But again, if people want to let you all know, I mean, you can do it anonymously. You can contact local law enforcement or the OSBI. Yes. Um, again, I'm just going to go through real quick. You can you can yeah. contact the OSBI. Uh, anybody that that knows where where these women may have been, um, anything, any little information about the case, anything helps. Um, so you can contact the OSBI. Tips at OSBI.ok.gov. Also, one eight hundred five two two eighty seventeen. Um, any tip is 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 very important for us. Um, so um, again, um, if people can reach out to us, that would be great. We really appreciate everybody that has shared our post um, and doing what they can in order to to help find these women. Okay, great. Is there anything else, Hunter, that you think is important to mention? No. Um, as soon as I get anything, if there's any updates, I will be certain to let you know. Okay, great. I appreciate it. Again, thank you so much for your time. I and mean, we just want to get the word out there because a lot of people are just that. I mean, obviously, it's so much invested even after you all put that post up online. So we yep. do we do appreciate your time. So. Yep. Okay. okay. Thank you again. Cool. I appreciate it. Again, if you have a tip that can help with this case, whether you know anything about the women before the incident or even anything suspicious or just something that you think might be noteworthy from after when their vehicle was found, you are encouraged to contact your local law enforcement, whether that's in Kansas or Oklahoma or the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. They are eager to get your phone call. They want to look into things to make sure that you can find closure for these families involved. She sounded like she had dogs in the background. Um, so I saw... Twinkles, wouldn't grandma be first one to see the car since she was meeting them? Not necessarily because if we go back to here, the pickup location was down here at the bottom. And so she could have drove down to this main road here and over to the pickup location. Actually, anyway, she would have came. She wouldn't have been up by the found car. So she wasn't meeting them where the car was found. 
and she wouldn't have driven past where the car was found. So I don't think grandma would be the first one to see the car. But I would think, purely speculative, if she was the one meeting them to drop off the kids, you know, if mom's not there by 8, 8.15, something like that, she would have called someone, whether it be the fiance, or even just knowing that they're in this lengthy custody battle, you would think, ooh, that's going to help me. I want to call law enforcement to document it even. So something Or like even that. call the lawyer, like even call a message that morning to her lawyer, mm -hmm. like, hey, so-and-so didn't show up for their visit this week. Please, you know, please make sure we keep note of that. Oh, thank you. Yep. Okay, we'll play that after these interviews. Yeah, that would be great if she could share that. Like, if we could see the... Because if she has it, then she's one of the few that has the full context. Okay, so then this one came next. And it was the next day on 12 News. I don't think there's a lot of different information. Can I just agree with Amber? There isn't any... Not We have no knowledge. We don't know if grandma did report it nope. that she didn't show up or if she has not reported that she didn't show up, we have no way of knowing that information right now. Oh, right. That's not out there anywhere. Mm -hmm. News connected desk. Now two women from Kansas are missing a post shared by the Hugoton police department says Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly are the two missing. We'll bring them up here real quick. Uh, these two women were on their way to pick up Butler's children, but they never made it. Now, Kelly is from Hugoton. The Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation says their car was found abandoned on the side of the road in the Oklahoma panhandle. There hasn't been too much released about this situation. Um, uh, Hunter McKee, public relations officer with the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, joined us now. Good afternoon, Hunter. Uh, these women have been missing since March 30th, so that's Saturday. From the time they were reported missing to now, uh, what does OSBI know? What we know so far is that their vehicle was found by the Texas County Sheriff's uh, Office, and this was near um, this was near uh, Highway 90. Was found by the Texas County Sheriff's Office. Does that mean that the Texas County Sheriff's Office are the ones to actually locate it, or did someone else locate it, call the Texas County Sheriff's Office, and then they went out? You see what I mean? That's where it becomes yeah a little confusing. Yeah five and road l um and this was just south so when you're looking at that texas county northwest oklahoma area that is near the kansas uh, border just south of the kansas border um their car was found parked on the uh side of the road there the two women were were gone though and there, there was no trace of where they might have gone yeah um, uh, the who did anyone there he report says, the or did uh so there he says the car was found parked on the side of the road there mm -hmm. and the two women were just gone yep they still haven't mentioned foul play yet in, at not this yet. date. Not at it's that the point. next one that they start to mention it, I believe. I... Did you mute yourself? You like Yeah, in one of them, he, I think in one of them he says there is no foul play, but then in the next one he says there is foul play. It was like, mm -hmm. what is happening? And I thought maybe this is a new guy speaking for them and like this is a new gig for him and he's nervous, you know? And then mm -hmm. I went and I looked and I found like interviews he had done like a year ago for OSBI. And I'm like, yeah, no, yeah. Not new to this. So I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't either. See, so Maisie says a lady passed by the car and called the police. But we've also heard that a, a young man and his father found the car. And yeah. and see, we've and heard this. There's one too, that the but, fiance, yeah. when she didn't return home in time mm -hmm. for the party, he left and he went to go find and then he called him and the other husband, you know, or Jillian's husband went to go find it. Like everybody has a theme, but the the bad part about it is that's just rumor and speculation. It's like totally we can't find any confirmation on it. Law enforcement is not confirming that any one person found the car mm -hmm. except for the Texas County uh, Sheriff's Office. That's it. NJ, that's where I am right now. It's either completely random and same happenstance, which is so bizarre, almost unheard of, or 
who knew about their route that day? Who knew what route they'd be taking and when they would be taking it? So I'm kind of in the same mindset you were. You are. A border just south of the Kansas border. Um, their car was found parked on the uh, side of the road there. The two women were were gone though, and there there was no trace of where they might have gone. Yeah. Um, uh, who did anyone report them missing, or did uh, law enforcement find them, or find the abandoned car? Uh, I guess. The, the, the Texas County Sheriff's Office was the ones who, the, their deputies found that, that vehicle in that area. So as soon as they found the vehicle and realized that there was something um, suspicious about that vehicle and that the women that occupied it were gone, that's when they requested us. Of course. So the, there they say the deputies found it, right? The deputies yeah. are the ones that found that vehicle. And as soon as they found it suspicious, they called us. Why would there, let me show you guys this again. Why so I really this, think that what happened, again, I wouldn't, and I don't know, you know, I'm city folks, so I don't really know, but I would imagine if I, if I'm driving through the country like that, there shouldn't be a random car pulled over without there, like, no. without there being some alarm in my mind, at least, of like, dang, do they need help? Did their cell phone die? Like, are they waiting on AAA out here? Like, what's going on? I just find it hard to believe, I mean... As quickly as it happens, what are the chances that a random deputy is driving but on this road? This the town of Eva, we're talking about like 10 people live in Eva. Like it is nothing. It it, it says Eva, but like there's no town there. There's Maybe a house there on and their like, way to somewhere else. Two or three houses there. Then you zoom out. Keys is the closest town and it has a couple hundred people in it uh keys does it's not very big at all as you can see it's over here on 56 then there's sturgis up here not the famous motorcycle sturgis but it's got maybe a hundred people i mean these are all it does it is near that school though there is a school there, but this school is so small. There is a reference mentioned about this school. So the school went on lockdown because it is just um, a mile or two miles south of this Yarborough Public Schools. Um, so Nicole, Veronica, you had a good point. What if the sheriff's department isn't that far from there? It is. So I did look up the sheriff's departments and they are not close by hang on let me see so elkhart has a county police but that's up in kansas and we know that it was so boise city down here in boise city is the Samarin County Sheriff's Office, the Texas County Sheriff's Office, we know, so that's who they said found it, right? Texas County Sheriff's Department. They are down here in Guymon, and I'm sorry if I'm butchering the uh, name. Guymon is the same place where the and OSBI office is. That, okay. So we know it's 45 minutes away. That's what's bizarre to me. Okay. Just to me. I mean, it doesn't. Yeah, it's just that, that's what's so co peculiar, guys. It's in the it's literally in the middle of nowhere. So, Amber, right. The only thing about that is, is there wasn't a description of um, of their car put out yet when mm -hmm. it was found. No, So that's, that's why it's like that's why Dietz is saying, like, it doesn't make sense that they were suspicious of the car and pulled over. To the mm -hmm. car, but again, but Dietz, maybe if we don't know, because he hasn't said the condition of the car, but what mm -hmm. if the doors were open? Would that make the police stop a little bit more? Like, yeah, that could the be. doors are open. I don't know. Yeah, it's 45 minutes away. Um, right, we didn't know the description. Uh, so the school, that's what I was talking about. The school that's right, it's just like a mile and a half, two miles north of where the car was found. It went on lockdown and this it was either the superintendent or the <laughs> principal. He came out and gave a statement. He said, it's just an overabundance of caution. They didn't know what was going on or anything like that. So they locked down the school and actually they kept it locked down for like two days. Yeah. But 
um, that school is so tiny. Veronica Butler went to school there. And the superintendent said that the year she graduated, she was the only one in her class. And he remembers it because he made a joke to her that, hey, you're the top of the class, but you're also the bottom of the class. So it is a very, very tiny school. Very tiny. So probably just to be be saved. Was it the whole week? I knew they at least two days, but I mean, they could be on patrol out there, Southern Gal, but from my experience of rural patrols, county sheriffs don't just patrol out in the middle so, of, you know what I mean? What if the, what it, like uh, Nicole B was saying in, in some small towns that she lives by, they take the cop cars home with them. Yep. What if that guy had taken the car home with him and he was heading in, he would have been heading in that direction if he was going into Texas County Sheriff's Department to work. Or, yeah, if he was headed to work or home from work, you're right, that's possible. Um, so he that, could have been coming, that I could see. Yeah, from somewhere out there and headed, I mean, that would be a long drive to work, but it's possible. I mean, they still are in Texas County. Cause I mean, honestly, is. where like, it, what's his other option is Elkhart. Like, yep. if he lives out that way in, in the country, it doesn't really seem like it, like Walmart's around the corner, you know? Mm -hmm. That's a possibility. This one is perplexing. Um, what did they find inside the vehicle, the car? In regards to our investigation, um, we cannot release the condition of the, the vehicle or what was inside. We can say that the vehicle that the two women were driving was a small blue uh, SUV. Um, and again, we are still investigating what we were able to find inside of the vehicle to help us lead to finding these these two women. Also, where they were traveling, too. We're still looking into that as well. Okay. Uh, where, I guess, do, they, do we know where the women were last known to be seen before this? We do not know. We know that these two women um, were from Kansas, that they were driving from Kansas. They're both from, from the same uh, uh, area there in Southwest Kansas. Um, so we know that they were driving together um, and they were driving to uh, Oklahoma, but the exact destination of where in Oklahoma they, they were going, um, why they were driving through. Um, I know that there's been a, a, you know, a lot of people put some information out on social media, but right now our special agents with the OSBI are still looking into where they were going and what they were exactly doing. Of course, I guess with so much limited information from the Oklahoma Pause. State investigation, why yeah, are they considered it. in danger? That part was really, really weird to me. Mm -hmm. The why they were traveling together, that question? Or... Oh, no, 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 no. Him saying they don't know why she went to... They won't. They don't know where where they were headed, or why yes. why they were headed that way. Like what? They would know exactly why. They knew. Yeah. I mean, it's it's on the flyer. So why is he stating? And this is, I think, four days after they went missing. Let me check again. It is. I think that was the third. No. April third. Yeah. So yeah. four days after they went missing, he knew what like why they were traveling there. Is it just him being tight-lipped on the situation? Maybe throwing what? off what he's putting out into the public. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, um, as for why did they travel together, like that made sense to me because mm -hmm. Jillian has to supervise what, uh, Veronica with the kids. Yep. Yep, she has to be there. It's a supervised visitation. So Jillian Kelly is the approved uh, supervisor of that visitation. She was what I call an alternate because there's uh, an official one that does it every time. Something must have happened and that woman could not do it. So then Veronica is allowed to pick from three uh, people that are already chosen to fill this role of being allowed to be a part of the supervised visit. Yeah, they have to be together for it's a supervised visit. So the supervisor has to be there for the entire portion of the visit. So she they ride with Veronica down to pick up the children and then whatever Veronica is doing with the the children that day, they stay the entire time and then they ride with Veronica back to drop off the children. And it happens every Saturday from 8 a.m to 5 p.m.
I uh, can't believe I'm asking, but do we know if local, yes, there is a local creator, uh, rock chalk that is down there, um, driving around and I will drop, um, I'll drop her link. If you guys want to check it out, she's driving around talking to people. Um, you know, I'm not saying anything about her, but take like what you hear on the live streams as rumor and speculation because it is coming from locals and whatnot uh it is a they're not a court officials but they are they have been approved prior they have received prior approval from the court to be the individuals that can do the supervised visits does that make sense i hope so yes <laughs> missing persons well, this is a very, very rural area of Northwest Oklahoma, as we've said before. And when you have a vehicle that you know was occupied by these two women um, parked along the side of the road, um, and they're both gone, um, it, it's extremely concerning. And so when you don't hear from them since Saturday, like you had mentioned, um, it's something that, that we're all, um, you know, obviously uh, aware of that there's, that there's a lot of concern and there's, um, there's a possibility that they can be in danger because nobody knows where they went. Of course, so that's kind of leading up to it. And of course, as you mentioned, the rural area. So is there any suspected foul play at this time? We can't confirm that there is foul play at this time. However, again, um, with their vehicle being parked along the side of the road, with nothing else being around there and the women are gone, it's um, it's something we are. Let me just put it this way. Uh, all possibilities are on the table of us investigating what may have happened this way. Of course, I know that since uh, OSBI hasn't really confirmed where they were going, but on social media, there's been, um, and we, they were going to get their uh, Butler's kids. Do we know, have you guys had any contact with her kids? At this time, we've had contact with several people that um, knew both of these um, women and had had contact with them in the hours and days prior to them going missing. Um, however, uh, right now we are still investigating um, if they were going to see um, children or who they were going to see exactly. Again, um, it's hopefully that's hopefully information as we're gathering that we'll have a little bit more clarity to. But as of right now, we're still unsure if they were going to see children or who they were going to see exactly. That yeah, Hunter, so I guess weird. why is there so little information being shared about this situation? What? He asks, he asks, mm -hmm. do we know what the status of the kids are? Like, you know, like, what can you tell yep. us about the kids? And he's like, we're talking to lots of people. Yeah. What? He's what? just so vague. I know Southern gal says what? I'm like, yep, it's crazy. Yeah, Have a, they're... a good sleep, Angelina. Go ahead, Anya. Sorry. No, that's okay. Like it was so like I don't know. That's just so weird. Right, and I'm it's with here. Not, like it's, it's so odd. He is no. not saying what is already on the flyer, and that flyer has been out since day one. It's it is extremely weird. Amber, right? We have no clue. They haven't confirmed anything yeah. uh, of that sort. I wish they would, but unfortunately they haven't. Is Kelly the, yeah. no, she is not the regular supervisor or was this, I don't know if it was her first time or not, Yeah, but she is not the regular supervisor. However, let me pop this up here again. Cause I get, I know there are new people hopping in from uh, who missed the first part of it. So let me share this again real quick here yep how do you know it's a social worker because normally normally i don't think social workers can be paid by the family mm -hmm. and the court documents say this person's being paid by the grandma for her supervised mm -hmm. visits so here's where it says in the court documents the Interverner Tiffany Adams shall inform the defendant Veronica Butler every Wednesday whether the approved supervisor, which is Cheryl Brune, whether she is available to supervise the upcoming Saturday supervised visitations. Tiffany shall be responsible for any and all supervision fees charged by Cheryl Brune. Defendant's supervised visitation shall take place as exactly as ordered herein on December 7th, 2022 and filed herein on September 25th, 
2023. That was another weird thing about this case is the file dates are so far apart. So this didn't start until September 25th, 2023. In the event that the approved supervisor, Cheryl Brune, is unavailable, the interverner, Tiffany Adams, shall notify the defendant, Veronica Butler, by Wednesday at 5 p.m., and then the defendant shall be allowed to use any of the following as approved supervisors. And there's three women's names. We redacted the first two because I haven't seen their names out there anywhere. So I don't want to put that out there. But the third one was Miss Jillian Kelly. They just misspelled it. None of the parties to this case shall have the unilateral authority to cancel uh, any visitations nor disqualify any of the above mentioned court approved supervisors. If any party should have a problem with a visitation or a supervisor, said party shall file a motion and a hearing will then be held regarding said motion. All visitations shall continue unless and until there is an order of this court stating otherwise. Supervised visitation shall take place on Saturday, November 25th, 2023, and shall continue on each and every subsequent Saturday as currently ordered until further ordered of the court. The parties shall meet at four corners for exchanges of the minor ch children for visitation purposes. If the visitation takes place at the home of the defendant, Veronica Butler, the defendant's husband shall be allowed to be present in the home during visitations. She wasn't married, but she was engaged, but anyway. I think, yeah, I think it's because of the fiance. Under no circumstances shall the minor children be exposed in any way to CV at any time. Now, that is in reference to what initially got Veronica to lose, you know, full guardianship in the first place. And we talked about it back in the beginning. So it doesn't say anywhere that... She knows these supervisors, that they're friends of hers, that they're social workers, any of that. Just that they are, these four women are approved supervisors by the court. That's all we know from the documents. Unless y'all know something that I don't know. Which is possible. Highly possible. Yeah. Let's see here. So Baby Blue was saying that in some of the they that in some of the like rural um or like country counties mm -hmm. that the deputies will go out and just randomly be driving around through like the open spaces or land. They don't just stay where like the people are. Um, but he said it is common to drive around like that. Or she, I, I don't know, could be. I a haven't seen that in our <laughs> counties, but I'm, maybe it is out in Oklahoma. Huh. Interesting. Uh, so here it's not a social worker that does it. So when we fostered, so we fostered a baby for six months and they weren't supervised. Well, mom had the mom, the biological mom had supervised visits. And so I'm trying to remember what it was called. It was, she wasn't a social worker. She wasn't a, um, case worker, or any of those things, but it's called something, something particular. I'm going to look that up while this is playing, but it's not, they're not the actual social workers. They don't work directly for DCFS but they have some, like they have a title. No, it's not the guardian ad litem is a, a guardian ad litem is an attorney for the children. I'll look it up while we're playing. It's not CASA. CASA comes and so CASA comes and watches visits. Um, not every visit, but they come whenever they want to. It's not an, I'll look it up. Um, but CASA comes and watches visits and, you know, has conversations with the children, has conversations with the foster parents. They also do visits with the biological parents and they're just to, they're to observe and they give, um, they also, you know, go to the court hearings and stuff and talk about those things if the judge requests it, requests it and whatnot. 
but the the person that yeah the name of the monitor person the person that like drives them back and forth supervises the visits it's they're not a social worker i can't think of what it's called though but i'm gonna look and i know that it's kind of causing issues for that rural area of the panhandle we understand that people are very concerned. People want to know what has has, has happened. I mean, the, these two two women, um, the people that, that that you speak to, this obviously is not normal. Not only is it normal for them, but it's not normal in that area for a car to be abandoned and two two women to just vanish. Um, but again, it's a comprehensive investigation that has to do with a lot of different local law uh, law enforcement agencies. And part of our investigation is um, we have to look into every aspect of what may have happened and what may have led up to, to, to them going missing. So again, we understand that people wanna know more, but this is information that we're still gathering through and diving through. And um, you know, we, we need to, to continue to look at this. And some of this is going to take time um, before we can necessarily release more information. Of course, I know that this is causing issues for Yarbrough schools, which is uh, 2.9 miles from where their abandoned car was found. They're in lockdown today, um, as well as they haven't really said when they will end. I guess, is is there anything that we can say to, you can say to the parents there? I know that as far as talking to the superintendent, it sounds like there's some parental concerns about sending their kids to school. Right. And again, um, just to kind of for clarity on that, that is the school district's decision on that. So that was not anything that we recommended. As of right now, we do not believe that people in that area are in danger. Um, there is not a suspect or suspects at this time. Again, we're looking at all aspects of this case of what may have happened to these women. So when there is a suspect or if there is, we will let everyone know. Um, but as of right now, because of that, um, we do not believe that, that the public is, is in danger at this time. All right. Perfect. Thanks for joining us uh, this afternoon, Hunter. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Let me see. So then this interview here takes place five days ago on April 4th. So it was the very next day. Okay. Uh, it's Hunter McKee, H-U-N-T-E-R-M-C-K-E-E, -E -E, Public Information Manager, Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. Um, on Saturday, March 30th, the Texas County Sheriff's Office requested the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation to investigate the suspicious disappearance of two women. This was 27-year-old Veronica Butler and 39-year-old Jillian Kelly. Um, uh, their vehicle was found abandoned. This was near Highway 95 and Road L, and this was just south of Elkhart, uh, Kansas. This was on the very northern uh, part of uh, rural Texas County, just south of that Kansas line. Um, as soon as the OSBI special agents were requested to assist with this case, um, our special agents, along with several other uh, local law enforcement uh, agencies in that area, um, all came together to um, try to track down where these two people went. Um, um, as this investigation continued, um, our agents were able to determine that the abandoned vehicle that was found along that road had um, uh, information that they were able to gather that um, showed signs uh, that there was foul play. Um, as of right now, what was found inside of the vehicle, the condition of the vehicle is still under investigation right now. And in regards to our um, investigation, that information cannot be released. However, we can say that um, based on what they were able to obtain, that there was foul play. Um, so there it changes on the fourth to foul play is involved. What are we congratulating one to her on? I don't know. I'm just standing up with the bell. I see everybody else saying congratulations. She's but I can't see I can't see the comment where it starts out originally of what they're so excited about. I don't even see you on her. Are you hidden from us? Uh, maybe chaperone. Uh, Some places anyone can supervise a boat, right? That's possible. Uh, there are three types of monitored visitations, professional, non-professional, and therapeutic. Mm. Safety monitor. No, it's not. Oh, baby. Dude, congratulations. There's Wander. I see you're there. I didn't see a previous comment. Oh, they're on the on a baby watch for a new grandbaby. Ooh, Wander. Oh. So excited. Do you know what it is? 
I mean, it's a baby, right? But you know, if you're having a grandson or a granddaughter, I'm so excited for you. That's awesome. A baby girl. Oh, oh my goodness. I bet you're going to spoil her rotten. Lisa's oh. waiting for a grandbaby girl. So I they- am. I can't wait for granddaughter. Like the boat. You can stop on the other side of the, the aisle on um, she. Man. And find all the cute little girl outfits. People that say boys' clothes are so boring, they just don't know where to shop because boys' clothes are fun. But girl clothes, oh my gosh, it's out of this world. I cannot wait, but I can. <laughs> I hope it's, it's a few years down the road. There are cameras when you cross over the state line. Not everywhere. Not everywhere. Um, I don't know if there would be in a rural area like that. Her brother is currently asleep beside me. Her brother is currently asleep. Oh, congrats. That's so stinking exciting. I know. Boys can be super fun. And they have some really (laughs) cute clothes out there. Yeah, there, and I'm with Yep. There's no camera. Uh, I'm trying. I'm thinking of all the times I've crossed the state lines here. There is one going into St. Louis from Illinois over into Missouri, but that's about the only spot, like, of all the places I've crossed the state lines. But the, I think that's mainly because it's a bridge that you cross over. Mm-mm-mm. So excited. Right now, we are still looking for both women at this time, and there are no arrests. And again, we've received several tips on this case so far, but we're asking that the public in that area or anyone that has uh, additional information or knows about the whereabouts of these two people to please reach out to the OSBI at tips at osbi.ok.gov. And you can also call us at 1-800-522-8017. We think these two women are even alive. We're not sure at this time. Um, we're investigating uh, this. Um, the, um, we're investigating this as everything is on the table. Um, we are hopeful that they are still alive, but we're going to do everything in our power to to track these these two people down as quickly as we can. That part was bad. Yeah. That is the school district's decision. Um, however, we understand that there are um, that there are uh, teachers and um, other people in the area that are very concerned. And, and we understand that they're doing what they can to keep their, their kids safe, as well as their, their teachers safe as well. Um, that, that is not something that the OSBI um, necessarily um, had, had told them that they needed to do, but that was the school district's decision. And, and we understand that they're just trying to keep everyone as safe as possible. Is your concerned about their well-being? At this time, we do not believe that the public is in immediate danger. Um, but again, we're, we're trying to do everything that we can to talk to as many people in that area as we can. Um, and because there is foul play involved in this case, um, we're doing what we can to, uh, identify possible suspects. And then if, if anything changes in regards to that, or if there's someone that we are specifically looking for, we will let the public know, um, and we will let them know if, if that changes. But as, as of right now, there are no suspects identified. Um, and right now we do not believe that the public is in immediate danger. Um, that is still under investigation right now. Um, the story is they were picking up children. What, were they their children? Whose children were they? We're still investigating that right now. We know that there was another law enforcement agency that had determined that that's where they were going. But right now, our agents are still investigating where their final destination was and where these women were exactly traveling to. We know they were traveling from Kansas. We know they were driving through Oklahoma and their abandoned vehicles found in Oklahoma. But where they were going is still under investigation right now. It's so weird. It's so weird that they keep saying that. Um, yes, I was just talking. Well, there's not a ton of tollways. There's tollways up by Chicago, but that's about it. But in the rest of the state, there's not any going into the other states. But I went ahead and went over here to Google, and this is where they would have crossed the state line. Uh, not a tollway, and I don't believe there's any cameras in this location. Um, there's not much of anything in this location except for some grain bins and stuff. It's a small, this is where Elkhart is. That's not like a camera. It's just to let you know there's a picture there, the welcome to Oklahoma sign. But, um, 
one of the, uh, which is just pure rumor and speculation, is one of the rumors out there is that the meetup location had changed. That is a rumor out there. That is a Strictly rumor. rumor. But when he is saying, like, we don't know where they were going kind of a thing, like, that kind of makes me mm-hmm. like, huh. Is it like maybe there is some truth there potentially, maybe allegedly, in my opinion? Or is he just being evasive? Or is he just being super evasive there? Of like, (laughs) stop trying to go after grandma. We got this, guys. I don't know. It could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were on. So they were coming down from Kansas into Oklahoma. Um, What is the scenario where the public isn't in danger? Um, if it is a personal relationship to one of the women, right? Of some kind. Doesn't mean grandma, but, you know, if it's a targeted, so. a targeted situation is where the public isn't in danger. I think that the reason why they thought it was a danger is because, like, they didn't have any answers at the time. They still don't, really. But... I think that they felt like, like, what if somebody is out there just taking out people as they're driving? That's the route that they have to go to to get to the school. Like, I don't know. Like, for me, it'd be like that. That was my thought process of why the school did it, because they didn't have answers. They didn't have any assurances from law enforcement that this that this wasn't a danger to the public at that point in time. That didn't come until later on, um, which they had already opened the schools from there. But that was my thought processes of like, you have somebody out here who's snatching people off the side of the road. Like, yeah, that's going to be alarming. We don't want you out there with your kids traveling to school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Sorry. I know Southern gal and Nicole B are talking about baby clothes, but I have still bought some from there, but I don't like anything with like logos on them so none of them are like logo shirts or anything but they have the best basics and the best baby socks ever i don't know what they put what they make their socks out of but they're amazing but anyway um osbi is saying everything is on the table and the public isn't in danger yep and they've said it since day one like you said earlier that the public is not in danger he does resemble ben affleck a little bit yeah, he definitely does. Mm-hmm. This is, I think it's more uh, evasiveness from him, like you said, to kind of like throw people off and say, you know, stop looking into granny, stop looking into the family. We've got this. And so they be- start becoming evasive in their speak. Of course. All right. Once again, um, Yarborough Schools made the decision to be on lockdown today. In a statement, they said, uh, out of an abundance of caution, a decision was made by the administration to operate in the lockdown status for Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024. That's today. Uh, saying, given the unknown nature of the missing persons incident, the close proximity of the event to the school and parental concerns, we felt that it was in our students' best interest to lock down the school for the day. There was not a threat of any kind made to the school district. We'll have more on this at, on 12 News. Starting at- so, did you... Oh, did you say something, Anya? Sorry. I said, there you go. Mm-hmm. But you notice he says April 2nd. I thought it was April 3rd because that's when it's posted. But that makes it even more confusing because on the other interview that he gave on April 2nd, he doesn't miss or mention foul play. <sighs> it's crazy. It's, it's like, and that's why I said, it almost is like when he first does the interviews, he's just talking, talking, talking. Then the next interview, he talks just a little bit, but a little less. And then in this one, it's totally like, hey, guys, you know, sir, is the grass green? And he's like, yeah, the sky is totally blue, guys. Oh, did I click? I think I clicked back to the wrong interview. Um, Do we know where baby daddy was all morning? Yes. So the children's father was um, he. Well, allegedly he is supposed to have checked into a program on March 22nd and he has there's no court documents to show any violation of that agreement family mm-hmm. members his grandmother has made a statement that he is in treatment still yeah. he does not get visitation in that treatment he does not get days out of that treatment 
He is there all day, every day, cannot leave. And that's according to the court documents. And according, yes, yeah, so according to the court documents, he was to go to inpatient treatment. According to grandma, so take it with a grain of salt that OSBI has, conf she says OSBI has confirmed he was there. We have no confirmation from OSBI that he was actually there. Um, but I would imagine he was, I Yes, I don't know. You would think they would have came out and said something. Yeah, no, not Fred Hill rehab. Oh, real yes. rehab. Oh my God. I don't it even was, know what that he means. Had like, he had a slew of charges, dad did, and was looking at what, like six years? Yeah, so um, how long has that treatment been going on? It was to start March 22nd, and it is six yeah. months long. So he would not be released actually until September 25th of 2024. No, grandma actually did not have temporary custody. No. Uh, dad had temporary custody and he left the children in grandma's care. Yep. And they were due to go back to court in April. That's mm -hmm. like, I, again, just speculation because that, information of what they were going back to court for is not available however back in november when they demanded for grandma to produce the children to the courts and mm -hmm. to pick back up on mom and dad being able to see the children on their with their visitation schedule at that point in time it is stated in the court documents that grandma had not filed anything for grand grandparental rights Correct. So I feel like there's a potential that what was coming in April was either file or give it up. Yep. It was something of that sort. And that's why I wish we could get our hands on the ones that we can't see. Um, yep. Yes. He had gun violations from previous charges and then he had a domestic violence against his pregnant partner and her mother. He had a situation with his mother in law and he was facing six years i don't know why yeah. six years is standing out in my mind and they That's a agreement okay and then they moved it down to the six months of court mandated inpatient rehab and so i do believe I i'm sure you know he was probably there or he would have been looking back at um those six years yes mom had filed the habeas corpus but that was responded to um, yeah that was already there's another document after the habeas corpus yeah. which was no, filed on november 30th um sunny cat said maybe their car broke down and some crazy picked them up sunny that's cat that's of, absolutely a possibility that's kind of where i am it's either that or when I say familial involvement, I just mean someone that knows one or both of these women. Yeah. And and I think it was Katie B earlier said, you know, if, if, like, everybody is so focused on Veronica and the custody and the grandma being a little, you know, at times saying some things that we wouldn't necessarily say to a judge, stuff like that, allegedly. But, mm -hmm. um what if like what if somebody was what if jillian was actually the target it could have been because we're it's we easy to hide it under the guise mm -hmm. of you know this this really it, you know messy kind of custody a, a situation going on you know That's it would have had to have been someone that knew jillian was traveling on that road at that time <clears throat> many people knew that information um kdb it's not Veronica's child. So Wrangler and Veronica are the children's mom and dad. Veronica and Wrangler were never married. They were together for a while. They got together very young and had two children. And then they split. I want to say it was like six months after the youngest was born. I could be wrong on that. But they split and they have been in a very lengthy custody battle custody dispute since 2019 he wrangler then gets remarried after that time frame and has a child or children with another woman i don't know how many 
that is the woman that was pregnant and he had a DV situation with was his actual wife. She is not connected to this case, but she has posted on her Facebook that she is sending out prayers. She yeah. said that she understands what Veronica had been dealing with because her herself had been dealing with it. Now she doesn't make reference if that's towards Wrangler or towards uh, Granny Tiffany, but she just says that she understands the dealing with the it circumstances. Situation. Yeah. yeah. So Gavel says, I know this is a dumb question, but how Never. does dad commit crimes and drug up and have full custody? Not relevant, really. Just curious. I didn't realize Wrangler was actually one tough customer. He... I... So that's the hard part is, is mm -hmm. he was given emergency temporary custody when accusations came out. I think they were in the process of figuring out if the accusations were legit or not. Like I said, there are a lot of people out there that say the accusations were proven and state sealed, but none of those documents are made available. Full documents have been made available to the public. So the only thing you can say, the only thing you can see in documents that are currently available to the public is or was up until last week um, or this weekend, but the only thing you can see for sure is that sh her supervised visits were because they had told her to keep the kids away from a family member and she did not decide to keep them away. On top of that, when the court asked if she had not kept them away, she chose to lie about it and that is what er earned her, earned him emergency temporary custody and earned her visitation or uh, supervised visitation. Yeah. Sorry, I ran and grabbed a pib while you were talking, okay. but did you mention that it, uh, how quickly that happened? The change from when she was granted the full custody? Yeah, in less than a year. Like, uh, well, no. Mm -hmm. um, so September of 20, no, August of 2022 yep. is when she was granted. Uh -huh. It was filed that she had full custody and he had um, he had just regular visitation schedules with the kids. Extended. And then in December yeah. of 2022, boom, there's these accusations and emergency custody goes to him. Yep. So like it's very four quickly. months later, like that, it was pretty quick. The court docs say a therapist in the state found the allegations credible, but no charges filed. It does stress the therapist wasn't the only one to come to that conclusion. But the problem is, though, is that that's not like there are there are, you know, there's screenshots of like partial pieces yeah. of information that are put out there. That is out there. Yes. But like to me, again, the context is everything. So like. It cuts off with saying the therapist has found it substantiated that these, you know, the accusations are true, but then it cuts off there. Like, you don't know what the court actually deemed after that or what the decision was from there because the full court document isn't available. So for me, I'm just uncomfortable with saying like, yes, this is true. This happened to these kids when I don't have the full court document to say that. That's all. I didn't say it has to be. I said that that's the only other option. So unless it's a complete random person, like we mentioned earlier, a completely random incident, that what what's left? The only other option besides a completely random person is someone that knows that they were going to be there. Those are the only two options. Um, that is still under investigation right now. Um, okay. um, other people in the area that are. Let's see where. Requested. This one over. Uh, it's Hunter McKee, H-U-N-T-E-R-M-C-K-E-E, -E, Public Information Manager, Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. Um, on Saturday, March 30th, the Texas County Sheriff's Office requested the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation to investigate the suspicious disappearance of two women. This was 27-year-old Veronica Butler and 39-year-old Jillian Kelly. Um, uh, their vehicle was found abandoned. This was near Highway 95 and Road L, and this was just south of Elkhart, uh, Kansas. This was on the very northern uh, part of uh, rural Texas County, just south of that Kansas line. 
Um, as soon as the OSBI special agents were requested to assist with this case, um, our special agents, along with several other uh, local law enforcement uh, agencies in that area, um, all came together to um, try to track down where these two people went. Um, um, as this investigation continued, um, our agents were able to determine that the abandoned vehicle that was found along that road had um, uh, information that they were able to gather that um, showed signs uh, that there was foul play. Um, as of right now, what was found inside of the vehicle, the condition of the vehicle is still under investigation right now. And in regards to our um, investigation, that information cannot be released. However, we can say that um, based on what they were able to obtain, that there was foul play. Um, right now, we are still looking for both women at this time, and there are no arrests. And again, we've received several tips on this case so far, but we're asking that the public in that area or anyone that has uh, additional information or knows about the whereabouts of these two people to please reach out to the OSBI at tips at osbi.ok.gov. And you can also call us at 1-800-522-8017. We think these two women are even alive. We're not sure at this time. Um, we're investigating this. Um, the, um, we're investigating this as everything is on the table. Um, we are hopeful that they are still alive, but we're going to do everything in our power to to track these these two people down as quickly as we can. There's a school district that uh, had been on lockdown for days over this. Why? That is the school district's decision. Um, however, we understand that there are um, that there are uh, teachers and um, other people in the area that are very concerned. And, and we understand that they're doing what they can to keep their, their kids safe, as well as their, their teachers safe as well. Um, that, that is not something that the OSBI um, necessarily um, had, had told them that they needed to do, but that was the school district's decision. And, and we understand that they're just trying to keep everyone as safe as possible. Should Oklahoma be concerned about their well-being? At this time, we do not believe that the public is in immediate danger. Um, but again, we're, we're trying to do everything that we can to talk to as many people in that area as we can. Um, and because there is foul play involved in this case, um, we're doing what we can to uh, identify possible suspects. And then if, if anything changes in regards to that, or if there's someone that we are specifically looking for, we will let the public know um, and we will let them know if, if that changes. But as, as of right now, there are no suspects identified. Um, and right now we do not believe that the public is in immediate danger. Um, that is still under investigation right now. Um, the story is they were picking up children. What were they? Their children? Whose children were they? We're still investigating that right now. We know that there was another law enforcement agency that had determined that that's where they were going. But right now, our agents are still investigating where their final destination was and where these women were exactly traveling to. We know they were traveling from Kansas. We know they were driving through Oklahoma and their abandoned vehicle was found in Oklahoma. But where they were going is still under investigation right now. Again, that, the, the information that was found inside of the vehicle or around the vehicle is, is uh, something that we're not going to release at this time. Are we any closer to finding these girls? We are hopeful. Um, we're, our, our agents and other law enforcement agencies in that area are working around the clock to do what they can to, to track these two people uh, down and to um, find out what had occurred, why they went missing. I mean, all of that is still um, under investigation right now, but we're hopeful that we'll have more, more, more details coming. Pretend these are mothers. Have you been able to speak to anyone's family? How are they feeling? If you There's a lot of... Um, individuals that our agents have been in contact with and have spoke to so, so far, that's family, that's friends, that's people that have been in contact with them up until the hours in missing. Um, but, but right now we're not going into to details of who we're exactly speaking to, but we're talking to as many people as we can to try to find out what had occurred. And there's really limited information about who these women were. Is there any more that you could tell us uh, a few mothers have got it? Not at, not at, the, at this time. Uh, we, we know that these are two women who, um, unfortunately, um, because they are missing, because it's been um, since Saturday, since anyone has heard from them, and because we were able to obtain information to declare that there was foul play, this is extremely sad and extremely unfortunate. Um, um, you know, we're we're hopeful that we'll be able to find out what had happened very soon. Any additional Not at this time. We um, again, what we're going to try to do is based on um, what we're able to find. Um, well, what, what I can say is right now we will continue to update on any information that that we deem is to release to the public on our social media platform. So again, we ask that people who, who want to follow this can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Um, so we will continue to put out updates. As of right now, there is nothing additional. But as soon as we have anything else, we will definitely let everyone know. There was a Amber Alert over um, can we Can we pause there for a second? That's the crazy part to me is this was what, the 4th of April? So like five days or something like that.
Sorry, I was muted. Yep, it's the 4th. April 4th. She so probably they've had no updates yeah. since then. No. Nope. You have the, I was wondering, is there a full court? I was just reading that. Do you have the full court document on that one? Okay. I think that I think they lean that way to Wanderer, but I, he's obviously he's not saying that. Yes, this was I think April fourth. It was April fourth. I don't know if that's last Tuesday, but uh, it was last Thursday. Last Thursday. There's just a little bit more on this one. Right now in Texas County, we're looking for two women, two people. And again, um, I just want people to understand that the public, the citizens in that, in that area are, have done a tremendous job of reaching out to us. They are concerned. They want these women found. Um, they want uh, as, as many answers as possible, and we understand that. Um, but as we kind of continue to investigate this and find out what had exactly occurred, we just want to put it out there that we still need people, anybody else that knows anything, please reach out to us by phone, and you can also email us at tips at ospi.ok.gov. Um, we're still receiving as many tips as we possibly can. And I do want to ask one last question. I feel like I've seen so many invasive cases. So there actually was one more after this. It comes the next day, but it's very short. It's from um, KOCK, but... Again, it's posted on April 6th. It could have been on April 5th as well. This one's really quick, though, and this is the last one where I have seen OSBI speaking. This case has really captured the attention of so many people all over the nation. The two missing women have been gone since Saturday, and now OSBI says this case is their primary focus. It's our number one priority right now for our agents to find these women as quickly as they possibly can. Time is of the essence for OSBI as they continue their investigation into the suspicious disappearance of 27-year-old Veronica Butler and 39-year-old Jillian Kelly. As the days and the hours go by, it becomes more and more challenging and more difficult. Law enforcement says Butler was traveling from Kansas to Texas County in the Panhandle to pick up her children. Kelly was in the car with her, but the two never showed up. A sheriff's deputy found their truck in a rural area of Texas County on Saturday. The two women nowhere to be found. Not not a lot of buildings, not a lot of homes, no cameras. It's, it's made it extremely challenging, but that's why we stress again that if you know something, please say something and please reach out to us. On Wednesday, OSBI said they found evidence pointing to foul play in the abandoned vehicle. The evidence that was in the vehicle, was around the vehicle, the condition of the vehicle, all of that is still um, under uh, investigation at this time. This case gaining national attention on social media, people sharing their thoughts, and OSBI says in some cases, wrong information. It makes it challenging because we're having to navigate through um, information that just isn't true. Still, OSBI is asking anyone mm -hmm. with information to please come forward. We need more. I mean, this is something that as it continues, our investigators need as much information as we can possibly get. And OSBI telling me today, despite false rumors and claims on social media, there have been no arrests in this case. Reporting live, Zach Royale, KOCO 5 News. Wow. I, didn't, I, didn't, I hadn't seen that particular one. Yeah, that one was really, oh, sh really short and sweet. Uh, it was on April 6th, so just three days okay, ago. Okay, so that's the most recent. Okay. Yeah, and then I... Like, again, everything is just the regurgitation of the information we already have. Self-aware, yes, I did say it would have had to have been someone they knew. But, again, the sentence in front of that. If it was not a completely random situation, what else would it be then? But, I mean, I don't think that they're focusing on Veronica. Uh, I think... The internet is, well, I don't know if they're focusing on Veronica. I think it's just because we have these court documents that on Veronica and Wrangler that gives us a lot more information. It very well could be someone or something to do with Jillian more so than Veronica. It absolutely could. Um, they, they just haven't give any other info. Um, 
So the two ladies, we don't know. We don't know if they were friends or if they weren't friends. We have no way of knowing that. Yeah, the only mm-hmm. fact we have is just that the Jillian she, was one of the alternates that was mm-hmm. court approved for the visitations of Veronica with their children. Did they say if the car was off the road in the field or on the field? It just He just says in one interview on the side of the road. That's all he says. Um, the husband has, no, it was the pastor of Veronica's church that, and then he called the, so the pastor of Veronica's church found out that they were missing and he called up Jillian's husband and they went searching. And by the time that they came across the two women or the two, the vehicle, the two women were in Law enforcement were already on scene. Which is still like, that's one of my kind of looming questions. Mm-hmm. Like who, who called the pastor and why and when? Yeah. Like that's, 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 that's peculiar that. to me, but I mean, honestly, maybe, uh, well, actually maybe fiance realizes she didn't come back. Mm -hmm. and maybe checks her location, sees that, like, she's not even at the place yet, calls the pastor to find out if the pastor has a connection with Jillian's husband, and they decide, hey, fiancé, you stay here, and we'll go out there. So... Maybe, I don't know. They do not attend the same church. They, the past, Veronica's pastor is an Assembly of God pastor, and Jillian's husband is a, a pastor for the first christian church so they don't attend the same one um yeah so he uh, i well somebody asked why hasn't the husband done any interviews yeah um i think because as we all know (laughs) the more interviews he does the worse it gets on social media Mm -hmm. so i think that you know just osbi has said that the um they've been in contact with the families and are working with them. So I think they all don't want to be interviewed because they want law enforcement to do their job. That's just my opinion. Kind of sounds that way. Uh, Grandma doesn't have someone to supervise the exchange. Mom has to have a supervisor on her entire visit. So she has, she has a designated supervisor name was Cheryl, I do believe, but she's the designated supervisor. If she is not available, then there are three alternates. There are two pastors. Mm -hmm. So there's the pastor of Veronica's church, and then Jillian's husband is also a pastor. Mm -hmm. So there's two separate pastors that we're talking about here. Yep. Uh, Maybe they call every so often or text, and it went to long I don't understand your question picks they call every so often like maybe time. Veronica or Jillian oh, like they yeah. text the, their sp- significant others pretty consistently throughout the drive normally and so when they hadn't contact mm-hmm. made contact potentially they got concerned maybe but we yeah. don't know Right. Granny, I guess, would technically be, hey, Merp, good to see you, girl. I haven't seen you in a while. Granny would technically be the supervisor on Wrangler's side. It's, so, again, Granny doesn't have any rights to the children at all. Um, she just was, the children were left in her care sometime before July 1st, 2023. Is that what it was? Yep. And so... That's all we know about that situation. Let me show you guys one last time before we hop off here. Typically, I would stay longer, but I actually have to be somewhere early in the morning, so I need to get to sleep. We don't know, Wanderer. Let me show you this. We don't know if they have their cell phones or not. They haven't released that. So let me make it full screen. And... They were traveling from up here in Hugoton, up here in Kansas, traveling down 56 into Elkhart. 
Elkhart is the border town between Kansas and Oklahoma. Then they traveled down 95, straight down, heading southbound. And this is where the vehicle was found on this curve of, well, off of 95 onto L Road. And let me go a little closer. Based on the video that we played much earlier, where the guy's driving by, it looks like the car is right over here in this area. Now, we heard from the OSBI agent that says that the car was on the side of the road. We don't know what that means. That's just what he said. This is about five miles north of where the court designated pickup location is, which is the four corners down here in Eva, Oklahoma. So they were just five miles short of that pickup location. Amber, that's what I wonder too, but we don't know. I'm sure as their investigation goes on, we'll, we'll know more of the details or potentially once an arrest is made, maybe we'll know more of those details um, or as they find them, um, that's possible. But right now we don't know, but I would be curious to know that as well as if grandma ever called it in or reported that they didn't show up for the meetup. Ooh, so Shay found me the court docs that were missing. Ooh. And I really appreciate that. Girl, you're good. Um, but it's getting late and I do want to read through these. So I think we're going to have to do a part two on this. <laughs> uh, I did just yeah. grab a bit by now, but. No, they did not find the moms. They did not. They found Dylan Rounds, <clears throat> but they did not locate the moms. We always say text or call along the way to family, friends or family that travel. So maybe that's a similar situation here. It could be. Could be. We don't know, like, that's the thing we don't know, and I wish we did, like, why those three women were uh, chosen to be the alternate, but they were approved by both sides. That's all we know, that, you know, both mom and dad approved those three women. Um, but the th so someone had messaged me uh, while we were playing that last clip and said, well, you know, Jillian could have chose to to go like she could have decided that she wanted to go along that day but what we do have in the court documents is that you know cheryl is the main supervisor and if for any reason she can't attend then uh grandma tiffany granny has to notify veronica and then veronica can choose from one of the other three women so it's not that the women just get to decide oh i want to go with you today uh, Veronica, it's it's that the main one goes, but for whatever reason, the main one could not supervise on this date, and so Veronica had to choose from one of her alternates, and then that alternate happened to be Jillian. Mm -mm -mm. Do you have anything else to add to this, Nanya, before we wrap it up? I, I do not. I'm, I'd be interested in seeing those court talks, though. Yeah, I'm going to screenshot them. It's, they're a little blurry. She said she was going to look for some clear. Oh, man, this is a great. Thank you so much, Shay. Is it the ones from the latest ones? I don't know. I have to, I have to scroll through it. There's a bunch of stuff in here oh, in okay. this thing she sent me, so. Okay. Yeah, we'll dig in deeper. So we'll definitely do a part two. Oh, Shambles will be happy. More so. Yes, she will. <laughs> uh, Pearl said off topic, but thank you, Deeds and Nunya and chat for keeping me company while I'm feeling rough. Oh, honey, I hope you get to feeling better. Nunya feels cruddy too. So she's, you're in good company. I do. I do. We'll all feel cruddy together. I know they do look like a lot of the screenshots look like they were taken through plastic wrap. That's so I don't understand it at all. Like, 
I, I, I can't understand why they don't just take good screenshots. I know. Hey, ATS. Hope you're good. All right, guys. That's all for this one. All right. Y'all have a good night. Yep. Thank you. Shambles was listening. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> all right. All right. We'll see y'all later. Thanks, Nanya. Have a good one. Mm -hmm. um, Sunny said, I watched your JLR video from a year ago. It was amazing. And he will never get another view from me ever. Oh, Sunny. Thank you for saying that, though, that you like the video. That's what a lot of I'm starting to get like a tickle in my throat. It seems like a lot of people are getting head colds and all the things. Good night, Earth. I hope you have a good night. And then if Jenny's up for it, I think tomorrow afternoon, evening, well, it'll be more evening time. We will finally finish going through the Sebastian interviews. I just, I needed a break from it. That case was like, it is it getting to be quite a bit, quite a bit. And I felt just overwhelmed by the things being put out there, but I'm ready to hit them hard again. So we can finish going through the interviews in chronological order. Good night, Shambles. Good night, Nicole B. Thank you so much for everything. Extra popsicles for you. Good night, Twist. Oh, I gotta see what your <laughs> your cat's hilarious. Oh, I know about Dylan. My heart goes out to his family and mom, but glad she does not need to search anymore. Amen. Yes, lots of prayers for Dylan's family. I won't. I'm I'm like one of those people who can drink, you know, a coffee right before they go to bed. So I'm headed there. So we will, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Love, love.